Chapter 251, Part 1 Following his gaze, he saw not far from Chin Luo, a humanoid mechanical life form about one meter in size with a somewhat ferocious appearance standing there. The weapon in his hand was shining with azure light, and the muzzle of the gun was pointed in the direction of Chin Luo. Obviously, the attack that Chin Luo suffered just now had something to do with him. Looking at the other party's red electronic eyes, Chin Luo's eyes flashed, thoughtfully. Decepticon? Wait, that's not right. Scanning his eyes across the other person's body, Chin Luo immediately noticed something unusual. Although the characteristics of the other party are very similar to those of the Decepticons, what is puzzling is that the other party does not seem to have the unique marks of the Decepticon faction, and judging from the fierce appearance of the other party now, it seems that he also doesn't have much sense, and is very different from the Decepticon members Chin Luo has seen before. Such a special 660 nature. Could it be? Thinking of a certain possibility, Chin Luo's eyes suddenly brightened. When he looked at the new Cybertronian life form in front of him, a trace of eagerness suddenly appeared in his eyes. He stepped forward unhurriedly towards the opponent. Seeing Chin Luo approaching step by step, the opponent became obviously more violent. Two gun barrels rose up from his forearms and launched a fierce attack on Chin Luo. Boom! Explosions sounded one after another, and countless shells rushed towards Chin Luo. However, these attacks had no effect in front of Chin Luo, who had been turning on energy conversion. They only caused ripples on Chin Luo's body surface, and then very quickly, returned to peace soon. Seeing that Chin Luo was not affected at all, gradually, this new life form finally stopped firing. His eyes that were originally full of ferocity seemed to have seen something that he couldn't believe, and a hint of instinct emerged in his body. Fear. Following this instinct, he immediately gave up his plan to continue attacking, turned around and wanted to escape from here. But how could Chin Luo watch the other party escape? Looking at the other party's movements, Chin Luo moved his feet and disappeared in an instant. The terrifying speed exceeding the speed of sound exploded instantly, and in just a blink of an eye, Chin Luo suddenly appeared behind the opponent, stretched out his hand, and then grabbed the opponent's neck and lifted him into the air. After being restricted from moving, this mechanical life form instinctively began to resist. If Chin Luo was still a little unsure at first, but after seeing the life form in his hand subconsciously shape-shifting and returning to its original shape of a microwave oven, he was immediately convinced of his guess. Decepticon members in their normal form are almost all vehicles with combat capabilities such as cars, tanks, or airplanes. This is the first time he has seen such household appliances. If his memory was correct, Sam, who had owned a fragment of the fire source, had inadvertently released the energy of the fragment, causing various utensils in the kitchen at home to transform into shape-shifting diamonds. Combined with the life form he saw now, Chin Luo was already very confident that the fire source he wanted to find was hidden in this space. Thinking of this possibility, Chin Luo was a little surprised. If it is true as he thinks, then he will no longer have to spend time looking for the whereabouts of the source of fire, which will undoubtedly greatly reduce his workload. With more motivation in his heart, Chin Luo had no intention of further delay. He squeezed the life form in his hand into a ball of scrap metal with a firm squeeze, then threw it aside and continued to search. In order to ensure that he did not miss anything, Chin Luo was not polite this time and immediately launched a large-scale cleanup of the base. At full speed, Chin Luo instantly turned into afterimages, shuttling through every corner of the base. At the same time, as long as there were falling boulders in front of him, they were all smashed to pieces by Chin Luo and dissipated in the air. Under Chin Luo's super high efficiency, the base gradually began to become empty at a speed visible to the naked eye. Without the obstruction of boulders and other obstacles, Chin Luo could also see the scenes inside the base. Much clearer. Dal. After the obstacles in front were cleared, the next moment, a series of roars were heard. Looking in the direction of the sound, Chin Luo was stunned for a moment, and then couldn't help but have a faint smile on his face. Interesting. Under his gaze, Chin Luo could clearly see that as the surrounding rocks and other obstructions were shattered by him, the shape-shifting Vajras who were originally pressed by these rocks and unable to move were finally able to break free from the restraints above their heads, stood up unsteadily. After a cursory glance, at least there were hundreds of pairs of crimson eyes looking straight in his direction. A low roar sounded and a cold and cruel killing intent exuded from his body. He walked slowly. He started walking and headed in the direction of Chin Luo. Click. There were dense sounds of metal friction. On the way forward, the hundreds of shape-shifting kings transformed into energy cannons shining with various colors of light, aimed at Chin Luo's direction, and all pulled the triggers. The next moment, countless artillery shells surged towards Chin Luo. Even the weakest attack among them could easily shatter a thick layer of steel plates. Now the combined power of these attacks can be as powerful as Tony's latest the developed Jericho missile is comparable to it, and it will not be difficult to smash a small mountain. However, even if their attack power has reached this level, it is still nothing to Chin Luo. Under the influence of the ability of energy conversion, 
As long as the opponent's attack cannot exceed the power of a nuclear bomb, then he has nothing to fear. And the attack in front of him is obviously much worse than the power of a nuclear bomb. Therefore, it is even less likely to hurt him. He, completely ignoring the opponent's attack, Chen Luo walked forward step by step without any intention of dodging, his face extremely calm. Countless artillery fire bombarded Chen Luo one after another, and the energy conversion ability was activated. Chen Luo's body shook rapidly, and then gradually returned to its original state. Feeling that the energy was almost collected, Chen Luo curled his lips slightly, turned his right hand into a knife, and the energy 0.9 after being converted and absorbed attached to it, and then swung forward fiercely. In an instant, a huge blue crescent-shaped energy wave emerged from Chen Luo's hand, and then swept forward quickly, just for a moment, when the energy wave slowly dissipated and the base fell into darkness again. The group of shape-shifting diamonds in front of them who were constantly attacking like Chin Luo stagnated, and the sound of artillery fire also stopped quickly. The crimson light flickered on and off indefinitely, and finally faded into silence. Plop. There were falling sounds one after another. Under Chen Luo's attack, these shape-shifting diamonds had no room for resistance. Their bodies suddenly broke into two pieces and fell to the ground. Just a meeting, the base was transformed by the energy of the fire source, and all the shape-shifting diamonds born were killed by Chen Luo and they no longer have any chance of living anymore. Chapter 252, Part 1 After glancing at the ground, Chen Luo didn't stay here too much. He quickened his pace and walked forward. Now that so many shape-shifting Vajras have been seen here, if his guess is correct, these mechanical life forms should be very close to the source of fire. Thinking that he will be able to see this artifact in Cybertron soon, Chen Luo also felt a sense of expectation in his heart. Just as he quickened his pace, intending to search for the source of fire, after advancing about a hundred meters, the next moment, in the darkness ahead, there was suddenly a surging red flash. Boom. Immediately afterwards, a huge amount of energy cannon was instantly blasted from the front, rushing straight towards Chen Luo. Facing this giant energy cannon, which was nearly ten times larger than the previous one, Chen Luo also had no intention of dodging. He stood motionless on the spot and withstood it. The energy transformation started again, and Chin Luo suddenly narrowed his eyes slightly as he felt the constant flow of energy pouring into his body, and he had a guess in his mind. Megatron? Hearing Chin Luo's voice, the figure in the darkness ahead slowly moved forward and gradually emerged from the darkness. Human, do you know me? Raising his head, he looked at the opponent's tall figure, which was no less powerful than Optimus Prime, with his cold and cruel red eyes, and the familiar Decepticon mark on the opponent's chest. A smile appeared on Chun Luo's face. Megatron's heart was full of doubts. Finally found you. Chen Luo sighed lightly and said with emotion on his face. Find me? Looking at the expression on Chen Luo's face, Megatron suddenly had a bad feeling in his heart. But soon, when he heard Chen Luo's next words, his uneasiness suddenly reached its maximum. Yes. Chen Luo nodded with a smile and kept walking, gradually approaching the other party. As long as I find you and get rid of you, then I can. While he was talking, Chen Luo suddenly stopped, his eyes narrowed and his eyes involuntarily fell on the other person's hand. His eyes slowly opened wider, and a trace of surprise appeared on his face. Wait a minute, that thing in your hand. Is it the source of fire? Facing Chin Luo's question, Megatron did not answer his thoughts at this moment. After hearing what the other party just said, his heart suddenly became alarmed, and he jumped back suddenly, and then without any hesitation launched an attack. More than a dozen long muzzles and barrels suddenly rose from his hands, and even all over his body, and surging energy rushed toward the weapons on his body. In less than a second, all the weapons were fired. Charging has been completed. In an instant, an attack was launched in the direction of Chin Luo. The next moment, surging and violent energy cannons were fired from the muzzle and poured in the direction of Chin Luo. But that's not all. At the same time, Megatron quickly mobilized the energy in his body and rushed towards the fire source standing still in his hand. After being stimulated by this energy, ripples suddenly appeared on the surface of the fire source, and then a blue energy light curtain spread violently in all directions, covering the entire base again. Affected by the energy of the fire source, the next moment, the shape-shifting diamonds that had been destroyed by Chin Luo and whose bodies were broken into two parts began to move again. The body made of metal began to shake violently, and then began to rapidly reorganize, transforming into a human form again, and slowly stood up from the ground. This is just because the body was cut into two parts before, so even if it is reborn this time, the two parts of the body have not merged again, but have formed two new mechanical lives respectively, but the height has dropped from the original. Many. But even so, with the shrinkage of body size, these new shape-shifting King Kong may not be as powerful as their original forms, but they are still at the surface level. In terms of single combat power, they are still far beyond ordinary people. 
their strength definitely not to be underestimated. Hearing the movement from behind, Chen Luo subconsciously turned around and looked. When he saw the scene from behind, Chen Luo's expression also changed slightly. F asterisk asterisk K them all. Kill this damn human being in front of you. Not far away, Megatron's low roar filled with murderous intent came. Upon hearing this sound, the new shape-shifting kings who were originally motionless shook their bodies and turned their heads in unison, looking in the direction of Chen Luo. With red light shining in their eyes, these hundreds of mechanical life forms raised their weapons in unison and launched an attack on Chen Luo without hesitation. Boom! Violent artillery fire suddenly sounded in this huge amount of base, and energy flames of various colors streaked across the dark space and fell on Chen Luo instantly. However, under such intensive firepower attack, Chen Luo still had no intention of dodge. He looked forward with a calm expression, approaching step by step in the direction of Wei Dian. Ignoring the harassment coming from behind, judging from the power of their weapons, not only will they not cause any harm to Chen Luo, on the contrary, by injecting their energy into the body, Chen Luo can also use it to strengthen himself. Because of such benefits, Chen Luo didn't think about stopping it. On the other side, Megatron saw Chen Luo still looking unharmed. His eyes instantly began to flash, and there was a trace of human shock on his face. Are you an extraordinary powerhouse? At this time, no matter how slow he was, he had already reacted. Such a possibility flashed through his mind, and his heart was suddenly shaken. Megatron knew very well how terrifying extraordinary existences were. Hundreds of years ago, he once again encountered such a strong man when he unintentionally led the Decepticons on a mission to other planets. Because they didn't know that there were powerful people of this level on this planet in advance, as soon as they arrived, they were directly attacked by the opponent who had been waiting for a long time. The result is self-evident. After suffering most of the casualties, he finally got rid of the opponent, successfully got back on the spacecraft and left the planet. Even though he escaped, he suffered extremely serious injuries at that time. It took several years after returning to Cybertron before he fully recovered, precisely because he had seen the terror of a transcendent level powerhouse once, 340 after thinking that Chin Luo might also be a powerhouse of this level. Megatron suddenly felt a sense of fear in his heart, and he immediately wanted to turn around and run away. But how could his movements escape Chin Luo's eyes? Chin Luo reacted immediately as soon as he saw the other party's movements. Now that his reward was right in front of him, how could Chin Luo watch the other party leave? So without thinking, he moved his feet and accelerated his progress instantly. The teleportation ability was activated again, just in the blink of an eye. Before Megatron could react, Chin Luo had already appeared behind him. The palm of his hand turned into a knife, and the energy originally absorbed into his body quickly surged out, wrapped around his arm, and turned into a long energy knife. Swing down slightly. The long knife instantly cut across the opponent's neck, and then continued unabated, cutting a more than 10 meters long ravine on the steel ground below. The energy contained in the long knife was finally exhausted and dissipated for three seconds. Minister. After doing all this, Chen Luo's body fell lightly back to the ground. With his back turned, he stretched out his palm, and then, a huge amount of metal head instantly fell into his palm. The red light in his eyes flickered for a moment, and finally gradually dissipated. In just a blink of an eye, Megatron, the leader of the Decepticon faction and powerful, fell silently into Chen Luo. And at the moment of Megatron's death, the voice that Chen Luo had been waiting for for a long time sounded in his mind. Chapter 253, Part 1 Ding! The Decepticon leader has been detected. Megatron has been killed. The main members of the Decepticon faction, Starscream, Noisy, Assault, Stun, and Roadblock, have died. The Decepticon faction has been defeated. Rewards are now distributed. The reward has been distributed. Congratulations to the host. You have obtained the authority to identify the master of the artifact. Hearing the system prompt in his mind, Chen Luo's expression remained unchanged. He stretched out his free left hand and tapped his fingertips lightly. Immediately afterwards, at the palm of the huge body where Megatron fell, where the source of fire was located, a purple halo suddenly appeared, wrapping it up. Then, driven by this halo, the source of fire slowly rose up. Get up and fly towards Chen Luo. Holding the source of fire in one hand, Chen Luo's eyes flashed, and he immediately chanted silently in his heart without even thinking about it. System, give me the master permission to use on the tinder source. As soon as he finished speaking, the voice of the system sounded in his mind again. Ding! A new artifact, the fire source, has been detected. The quality of the fire source meets the prerequisites for identifying the owner. Do you want to bind it? Yes. The fire source has been bound. As the sound of the system gradually faded away, Chin Luo could clearly feel that an inexplicable connection had been quietly established between himself and the fire source in his hand. He had also experienced this feeling before, 
Just before this was the case when he obtained the artifact called the Blood Cup. And as the owner of this artifact was recognized, its function was also known to Chen Luo. The ability of the Source of Fire is extremely simple. Unlike the Blood Cup, there is only one in total. This is an ability called Creation. Its function is to give life to other metal objects by releasing the energy of the fire source, thereby causing the other metal objects to shapeshift and transform into diamond forms. And after undergoing this transformation, the shapeshifting King Kong will be completely subject to Chin Luo's control. As for its effect, he has already seen it through Megatron's demonstration just now. Although it does not pose any threat to him, it does not mean that this ability is nothing more than that. Limited by the materials in the base and the power of the weapons before being transformed, among these new shapeshifting King Kongs, the original body was only as strong as a military jeep, which also greatly affected what they could achieve. Upper Limit You must know that the strength of the shapeshifting King Kong created by the fire source is closely related to its original creation. Although the strength of the shapeshifting diamond that can be created is at least at the surface level, if the power of the creation before transformation is more powerful, then the strength of the shapeshifting diamond after transformation will be even more terrifying. Take the battleship Thanos rides on in the future as an example. If it can be transformed into a shapeshifting King Kong, its strength will definitely exceed the limit of the surface level. Even the extraordinary level powerhouse may not be its opponent. If Chin Luo faced an opponent of this level today, he would not dare to say that he would be able to defeat the opponent reliably. It can be seen that a large part of the power of the fire source artifact has not yet been developed. As long as a suitable carrier is found for it to create a shape-shifting diamond, the energy it can explode will definitely exceed everyone's imagination. He understood this in his heart, and looking at the artifact in his hand, Chin Luo was also very satisfied. With a thought, he took the fire source back into the system's own dedicated space, like the blood cup. This space can only store items bound to the host. And then, in less than a minute, he took the new students behind him. After the shape-shifting King Kong was resolved, Chin Luo did not stay here anymore and immediately left. With the blessing of teleportation ability, it only took less than a second. The next moment, while Fury and others on the ground were still anxiously waiting for the results, suddenly, ripples flashed in the air, and Chen Luo's figure instantly appeared on the ground, in front of everyone. Mr. Chen Luo. Seeing Chen Luo appear, Fury and Phil Coulson's eyes lit up and they immediately stepped forward to greet him. Mr. Chen Luo, how's it going? They're at the base. Don't worry. It's okay. Chen Luo nodded lightly and gave the two of them a reassuring look. Megatron has been taken care of by me. Now there should be no threat from the Decepticons. You don't have to worry about this anymore. Hearing Chen Luo's answer, the two of them breathed a sigh of relief. Mr. Chin Luo, thank you very much for your help this time. After coming back to his senses, Fury looked at Chin Luo seriously and said solemnly, My promise will always be valid from now on. If Mr. Chin Luo needs my help in the future, yes, as long as it does not exceed the scope of my ability, I will definitely do it. It's good to have your words. Chin Luo smiled and said, If I need your help in the future, I won't be polite to you. Fury definitely has no reason to refuse. Although he now is the other party a favor, correspondingly, he also has more opportunities to connect with Chen Luo. If he can handle the relationship with a strong person like Chen Luo in the future, whether it is for SHILD or himself. That being said, it's definitely a good thing. Coincidentally, Chen Luo also had this idea in mind. Regarding this black braised egg, since there is no direct conflict of interest between the two, and with the size of SHILD in this world, being on friendly terms with such a force also has many benefits for Chen Luo. Therefore, under such considerations, the two people who had a tacit understanding quickly became familiar with each other. After a brief exchange, Chin Luo did not stay here any longer. After waving goodbye to the two of them, Chin Luo immediately activated his teleport and disappeared in front of the two of them. After Chin Luo left, Fury immediately sent people to take action. Zhao Qian's, first, they had people collect the bodies of all the Decepticon members including Starscream that Chin Luo had just killed. Then they didn't let them wait for long. After receiving the request for help from Fury earlier, the staff of other bases also responded as quickly as possible. He rushed over quickly, fully armed, and ready to fight. However, when they came over, Fury immediately ordered them to start exploring the bottom of the collapsed dam not far away. So with the efforts of these people, Fury returned to this familiar base in less than two days. Director Fury, come and take a look, there is a big discovery here. The moment he just stepped into the base, suddenly, Phil Coulson's voice came from not far away. Following the sound, Fury came over, and under the illumination of the surrounding lights, Fury immediately saw the scene in front of him clearly. What's this? Chapter 254, Part 1 After looking at the metal debris that appeared on the ground at this moment, and the hundreds of humanoid mechanical beings whose bodies were mangled and had long since disappeared, Fury's pupils shrank and he subconsciously said, Director, these things seem to be the same as the big guys we faced before, and they should be members of the Decepticon side. 
but it seems that they were buried here together with Megatron. Like Megatron, they are now completely dead. After saying this, Phil Coulson stretched out his hand and pointed forward. Looking in the direction he pointed, Fury could clearly see that not far ahead, there was a huge figure that far exceeded the mechanical life forms in front of him, quietly lying there, motionless. Near the huge amounts of metal body, a metal head about one meter high was placed on the ground. Looking at the unique shape of this head, Fury recognized it at a glance. It is undoubtedly Megatron who launched the attack on the base before. Looking at the lifeless Megatron, and then looking at the metal debris at his feet, Fury frowned, and a trace of doubt emerged in his heart. How the hell did these things end up here? He remembered clearly that before the incident at the base, only Megatron was held in 750 here. This was the first time he saw these small shape-shifting King Kongs, so Fury was a little surprised as to how they got here. Maybe they found it from the underground. Phil Coulson thought for a while and replied, I think these members of the Decepticon faction must have learned about Megatron from somewhere, so they came here specially. Rescue. With the technology of these alien creatures, it shouldn't be difficult to get here through certain means. That's right. Fury nodded slightly, and a lot of doubts in his heart were dispelled. Without further thinking, Fury had a serious flash of light when he looked at the metal debris on the ground and immediately gave the order. Phil Coulson, take your people and clean everything here quickly, and then send these mechanical creatures for research to see if you can learn anything from them. Yes, I understand. Phil Coulson nodded and replied. Later, when Fury was about to turn around and leave, he suddenly seemed to recall something and immediately turned around and ordered others to start a new search at the base. Director, I didn't find the cube you mentioned. However, after others searched for it, they still couldn't find the giant cube that Fury had mentioned. After hearing their report, Fury, who did not believe in evil, immediately went to look for it himself. He also searched around, but found nothing. Only then did Fury give up his plan to continue searching, turned around and headed back home. Although he did not find the whereabouts of the fire source originally stored in the base, he did not suspect it at all on Chen Luo. After all, in his opinion, the cube was tens of meters high. Such a giant cube Chen Luo wanted to take it away, so how could he not see it? After eliminating the only correct answer, Fury thought carefully and finally came to the conclusion that the cube was destroyed by Megatron who was still at the base at the time. Although he felt a little regretful, after all, Fury didn't understand the true ability of the fire source, so he quickly put himself in order, gave Phil Coulson a few words, and then turned around and left. Inside. The other side. Just two days ago, Chen Luo had just said goodbye to Fury and the others, and immediately set off in the direction he came from. With his teleportation ability, it only took a few minutes to cross thousands of miles and appear in front of Megatron and others who were still speeding on the road. Looking at the figure that suddenly appeared in front of him, Optimus Prime, the leader, reacted quickly and immediately braked to a stop. Chun, why are you back? Then, Optimus Prime's somewhat confused voice sounded. It's nothing. Chun Luo waved his hands casually and said, I have already solved the things over there. It's okay to stay there, so I'm back. Hearing this, everyone was suddenly filled with surprise. So fast? Definitely. It's not a big deal after all. Chen Luo smiled and nodded, then seemed to remember something and continued, By the way, I think you don't have to go to Nevada anymore. There is nothing for you to find over there now. After that, before they could say anything, Chen Luo flipped his palm, and the source of fire suddenly appeared in his palm. Because I've got what you're looking for. As soon as these words came out, the scene suddenly became silent. Everyone stared blankly at the things in Chen Luo's hands, and their hearts suddenly surged. This is the source of fire? Optimus Prime murmured, with a humanized look of shock in his eyes. Feeling the energy that is constantly surging inside the fire source at this moment, and the throbbing coming from the depths of their own souls, even though it is the first time for most of them to see this legendary treasure of Cybertron, but he was still able to confirm the authenticity of this artifact at a glance. There is no doubt that the only thing that can give them this feeling is the source of fire. Chun. How did you find it? Facing Optimus Prime's question, Chen Luo just smiled faintly, and then said, Maybe it's a coincidence. When I went to help, I happened to see this thing in Megatron's hand. So I took it over. Megatron? Everyone was stunned, their eyes full of confusion. There was nothing to hide. Chen Luo directly told them about his encounter with Megatron and his party. After hearing that most of the Decepticon elites, including Megatron, had died in the hands of Chen Luo, everyone immediately looked at each other in shock. Tom doesn't even know what to say. You should already understand the matter. Now that the source of fire has been found, there is no need for you to continue searching there. Besides, now that most of the Decepticons have been destroyed, they will no longer pose any threat to you. So I think, it's time for you to consider your next plan. Speaking of this, Chen Luo's face gradually became serious, looking at the leader god and said, As the leader of the Autobots, you should now think about your compatriots. 
Didn't I remember you told me before that Cybertron was about to be destroyed? In this case, it's better to stay on Earth. Got it. If you don't mind, I can help arrange your future residence. It can also be regarded as your first home on Earth. Home. As soon as these words came out, everyone seemed to be reminded of something, and for a moment, the atmosphere seemed to suddenly become sad. After a while, Optimus Prime came back to his senses first, stared deeply at Chen Luo for a while, then slowly stretched out his palm and said in a deep voice, In the name of the leader of the Autobots, Chun, are you willing to be our ally? Looking at the other person's outstretched palm, Chen Luo had a smile on his face and reached out to hold it. Definitely. Chapter 255, Part 1 After reaching an alliance, Chen Luo immediately contacted Craven and asked him to arrange a residence for Optimus Prime and his party. Not long after, Craven sent someone to contact Chen Luo. It is also worth mentioning that when Optimus Prime and his party left, Bumblebee still did not go with them, but sought Optimus Prime's consent. Later, he was able to continue to stay with Chen Luo. So after the others left, Chen Luo also entered the car and drove home with Bumblebee. When Chen Luo returned home again, it was only about three or four hours before Peter went to school, and it was still quite some time before Peter and May returned home. Since there was enough time, Chen Luo did not intend to stay here anymore. It just so happened that I hadn't visited Qin for a while, and now was the opportunity. As soon as he thought about this, Chen Luo immediately took action. After going out, he returned to the carriage and sat down. After telling Bumblebee his destination, Chen Luo sat peacefully in his seat, closing his eyes and relaxing. The reason why he wanted to take Bumblebee with him on this trip was also for the sake of future dates. If he wanted to take Qin with him on a date, it would be better for him to just teleport on the way, which would not only cause a lot of unnecessary panic. And there are also many inconveniences in other aspects. It's like if he wants to give Qin some gift, he can't let the two of them carry it by themselves, so if Bumblebee is around at this time, he can feel much more relaxed. Definitely, the most important thing is that now that he has a smart car like the Bumblebee, if he doesn't show it off, that's not his character. How could he and Tony become good friends? In some ways, they also have many similarities in personality. At the very least, when it comes to pretending to be cool, the two of them can be said to have hit it off. Then another two hours passed, and with the roar of the engine, Bumblebee, carrying Chin Luo, finally arrived at the door of Xavier's school and slowly stopped. The car door opened automatically, and when he felt the movement from the outside world, Chin Luo, who had closed his eyes to rest, opened his eyes in time, told Bumblebee to wait for him here, and then left the car. Go down. Arriving at the teaching building with ease, Chin Luo was about to find someone to ask about Chin's current location. However, before he could ask, the next moment, an exclamation that was very familiar to him came from behind. List. Hearing this voice, Chin Luo was slightly startled. He turned his head and saw the person coming, with a hint of surprise in his eyes. Tony, why are you here? Yes, the person coming was none other than Tony Stark, who had been away from him for eight years. Following Chin Luo's gaze, he saw that Tony was staying with Charles at this moment. It looked like he had just come out of the principal's office. Seeing Chin Luo arriving, Charles had a smile on his face and nodded slightly to him. Charles's reaction was normal, but Tony was different. After seeing Chin Luo appear here, he first rubbed his eyes in disbelief. After confirming again and again, when he finally confirmed that the person coming was Chin Luo, the surprise on his face could no longer be concealed. Grinned and walked towards him with a big smile. It's really you. He stepped forward and hugged Chin Luo vigorously and slapped Chin Luo's back hard. Wani's face turned red with excitement. You guy, how many years have passed? I can still see you again. It seems that there was nothing you could do about the nuclear explosion back then. You really did belong to me. It would be a lie to say it has no impact. Chin Luo smiled and shook his head. If it really couldn't hurt me, I wouldn't have to spend so many years to come back. Make sense? Tony nodded in agreement, looking at the intact Chin Luo in front of him. He still couldn't help showing a hint of amazement on his face. But this is already an exaggeration. You can even recover from an explosion of that magnitude. I think no one can match your vitality. After sighing, Tony seemed to have thought of something and blinked at Chin Luo with an inexplicable smile on his face. He punched Chin Luo on the chest and then said with a smile, then you came here this time to find Sheen, right? Seeing Chin Luo nodding, Tony rolled his eyes and the smile on his face became even bigger. It seems you are going to give him a surprise. That's just right. I saw Sheen going to teach the students before. You go over there now. You should be able to find it. Chin, you don't know that Sheen has been single all these years to wait for you. If she knows that you finally came back alive, she will definitely be very happy. Listening to Tony's serious analysis on the side. The expressions of Chin Luo on the side and Charles behind Tony gradually became a little weird. Finally, Charles coughed slightly and interrupted Tony's words. Tony, let me excuse you first. Perhaps you don't know yet, but Chun has actually been here some time ago. We also knew that Chin was back. Speaking of this, 
Charles couldn't help but show a trace of apology on his face and said, I'm so sorry Tony, we thought Chun had told you about his return before, so we didn't remind you. It was my negligence. Listening to Charles's explanation, Tony's smile froze, his eyes widened, and he was suddenly dumbfounded. What did you say? You guys already knew that Chen Luo was back. Yes. Seeing Charles nodding, Tony moved his eyes in the direction of Chen Luo, narrowed his eyes slightly, gritted his teeth, and forced a smile. Please give me flowers. Why, Chun? Shouldn't you give me an explanation? Ahem. Chen Luo looked away from Tony in embarrassment and looked away, avoiding Tony's gaze. Unintentionally looking outside the door beside him, Chen Luo's eyes suddenly lit up, and he suddenly had an idea in his heart. Turning his eyes back to the original position again, Chen Luo sighed pretentiously and said, Tony, you may not be sure. In fact, I really thought about contacting you, but I have some other things to deal with recently, so I have been delayed. Got it. But now I have taken care of everything. I originally planned to contact you after my date with Chin today, but I didn't expect to see you here. Haha, <laughs> then I came at the wrong time? Tony said with a sneer. Zero, how could it be? Chun Luo quickly patted Tony's shoulder and comforted him. Actually, even if you don't come today, I plan to go over and find you. Speaking of this, Chun Luo suddenly showed a mysterious smile on his face, raised his eyebrows at Tony, and said, You happen to be here now, I will show you something good. I guarantee to shock your eyeballs. Oh. Tony's attention was attracted by Chin Luo's words, and he suddenly became interested. He and Chin Luo are also old friends, so he naturally knows that there are not many good things that can catch Chin Luo's eye, and seeing Chin Luo's mysterious appearance now, this immediately aroused his curiosity. What good thing is it? Facing Tony's confident gaze, Chin Luo smiled confidently. It's nothing, it's just a luxury car. What? Upon hearing Chin Luo's words, Tony's face fell, and his eyes were filled with disappointment. I thought you were talking about something good? So that's it? Tony couldn't help rolling his eyes, Chin. After all, you've been recuperating over the years and your vision has deteriorated, right? A luxury car, what's so good about a car? I have everything I need in my garage at home. If you like it, I'll give you one as a gift. Seeing Tony's disdainful expression at this moment, Chin Luo smiled half-smilingly and said softly, A luxury car is definitely nothing unusual, but if I say, it's not an ordinary luxury car? Hearing Chin Luo's words, Tony was slightly startled and frowned, Chun. What do you mean? Chin Luo's expression remained unchanged and he continued. Tony, have you ever seen a luxury car that does not require manual driving, has its own intelligence, and can transform into a robot? Wardfa? Tony's eyes widened, revealing a black question mark face. Chapter 256, Part 1 Shed, this is actually true. Following Chin Luo to the gate of the academy, Tony opened his mouth subconsciously and couldn't close his jaw for a long time when he saw Bumblebee returning to his shape-shifting King Kong form. At the same time, behind Tony and next to Chin Luo, Chin was also looking ahead with a surprised look on her face, curiosity shining in her eyes. Is he Bumblebee? He looks pretty cute. Bumblebee. Seeing the two people in front of him looking at him with burning eyes, Bumblebee scratched his head subconsciously, tilted his head to one side, and looked at Chin Luo, his eyes full of questions. As if seeing Bumblebee's uneasiness at the moment, Chin Luo smiled and waved his hand, comforting, Don't worry, Bumblebee, they won't do anything to you. It's just their first time seeing a life like you. So they are a little curious for a while, but they will be fine soon. After hearing this, Bumblebee breathed a sigh of relief and became quiet again. After being surprised, Tony came back to his senses and stared directly at Bumblebee, walking back and forth beside him, looking at him constantly. The desire in his eyes seemed to overflow. Even if Chin Luo was behind him, both of them could feel it clearly. What a magical life form. There is actually silicon-based life in this universe. It's incredible. Finally, when Tony stopped again, he still couldn't bear to take his eyes away from Bumblebee, shook his head and sighed. How is it? Isn't it amazing? Chin Luo walked up to Tony, turned his head, winked at him, and said with a smile, Do you want to own a big guy like Bumblebee? Um? Tony's eyes suddenly lit up. He raised his head suddenly, looked straight at Chin Luo, and asked him patiently, Chun, are you serious? Are you saying you want to give Bumblebee to me? You are indeed my good brother. Don't worry, brother. Bumblebee will definitely get better treatment from my side in the future. I will take good care of him. Looking at Tony who was already lost in fantasy, Chin Luo rolled his eyes and quickly waved his hand. Stop, stop, stop. Who said I was giving up Bumblebee to you? I was talking about another big guy. Another one? Tony was stunned for a moment, then reacted instantly. His eyes started to light up. Could it be that? Chian, do you know anyone else? Definitely then. Chin Luo nodded and came immediately. Then Shin Luo also briefly told Tony and others about his relationship with the Autobots. After saying this, Shin Luo said, I do have the contact information of other Autobots here, but first of all, 
I don't mind if you find other Autobots. If they are willing to go with you, I won't stop them. As long as you have the ability to persuade them, I won't help in this. That's enough. Tony nodded, and a confident smile returned to his face. Since Chun, you can have a partner like Bumblebee, then I'm not bad at all. Just wait and see. It won't be long before I can too just like you. Then I'll just wait and see. Chun Luo smiled and replied. Chun Luo naturally believed in Tony's ability. With his talent in mechanics, he would definitely be able to attract other Autobots. In addition, this guy is as rich as him now. With such conditions, even if you can't find many in the whole world, I think there are quite a few Autobots who are willing to join Tony. Not long after, after chatting with Tony for a while, Chun Luo also planned to say goodbye to him and take Chin out on a date. But just when he was about to say goodbye, Chin Luo subconsciously glanced at Bumblebee beside him, and with a sudden move in his heart, he turned to look at Tony and asked, By the way, Tony, there's something I might need your genius to help with? No problem. If you have any questions, just say it, as long as I can do it. Tony nodded immediately and agreed without any hesitation. Actually, I'm asking you this favor for Bumblebee. The microphone on his body is broken, so he can't speak now. Can you see if there is any way to fix it for him? What did you say? This big guy can still talk? Hearing Chin Luo's words, the anti-traditionalists were surprised. That's definitely. Bumblebee and the others are powerful people in the universe. Isn't it normal for them to be able to talk? Is that so? Tony looked subconsciously in the direction of Bumblebee, his eyes suddenly eager to try. I know, just leave this to me. But now it may take two days. I still have some things to deal with here. Let's talk about it when I get back. Two days ago. Obadiah approached Tony and said that the Eagle Army in Afghanistan wanted to introduce a group of troops to destroy. This order amounted to nearly $10 billion. Such a big business was enough for Tony to take action personally, so after saying goodbye to Chin Luo, Tony planned to leave for Afghanistan. Definitely, Chin Luo also knew nothing about Tony's next actions. So after saying goodbye to Tony, Chin Luo didn't think much, and immediately took Chin to the car with him, and played outside until the night. Then, after sending Chin back to the college, Chin Luo set off to go home. It was very close to the time for Peter and the others to return, so Chin Luo did not return by car. After letting Bumblebee go home by himself, Chin Luo immediately used his teleportation ability and quickly returned home. After he had prepared dinner, by coincidence, the doorbell rang outside the door, and immediately after, Peter and Mei pushed the door open and entered. After a pleasant dinner, Chin Luo took Mei back to the room to rest. As soon as awakening came, Chin Luo started preparing breakfast as usual. However, while he was cooking, a voice from the TV nearby instantly attracted his attention. An urgent news just came from Afghanistan. According to the news there, our army was suddenly attacked by a group of unidentified militants while returning to the base and suffered heavy losses. In addition, the president of Stark Industries, Tony Stark, was also in the team at the time. Due to the attack, Toby is now missing, Chin Luo's movements suddenly stopped, and his face was full of astonishment. Tony is missing? Chapter 257, Part 1 just when Chin Luo and Chin went out on a date. After hours of running around, Tony finally arrived in Afghanistan. As soon as he got off the plane, the military personnel who had been waiting at the airport for a long time immediately came forward and took Tony with them towards the military base. At the moment, Tony was thinking about Chin Luo's previous promise, in order to have a cool big guy like Bumblebee as soon as possible, so Tony didn't want to stay here for a long time. I just want to finish this business quickly. Return immediately. With this idea in mind, Tony had just arrived here and he didn't even have time to hold the party he always liked before, so he immediately couldn't wait to sell his product to the top military officials. Gentlemen, next you will see the latest scientific research results of our Stark group, the Jericho missile. After some talk, Tony faced everyone and slowly opened his arms. Following his movement, the next moment, a giant missile with Stark's mark blasted out, dragging a long tail flame and rushing straight towards the mountain in the distance. Boom! Just when the missile was about to hit the mountain, suddenly, it began to split instantly. Then under everyone's surprised eyes, the missile split into hundreds of small 29-type missiles and shot towards the mountain from all directions. Attack. Continuous explosions sounded loudly, accompanied by hundreds of violent fires rising in the mountain. Then, a thick white smoke instantly enveloped the huge amounts of mountain. Seeing the momentum created by this missile, the entire audience fell into silence for a moment. After a while, when the white smoke over the mountains in the distance gradually dissipated, through the data detected by the drone, looking at the scene of destruction caused by the Jericho missile just now, except for Tony, everyone else's hearts were filled with excitement. Shocking. According to the conclusions drawn from the on-site inspection, the damage caused by this Jericho missile was even comparable to that of a small yield nuclear bomb, and its power was far greater than any weapon they had ever seen before. It is no exaggeration to say that under nuclear bombs, the destructive power of the Jericho missile can be regarded as the most powerful. Faced with such a big killer, 
How could they let it go so easily? So Tony didn't need to say anything. After seeing the power of the Jericho missile, they immediately reached an agreement with Tony. Less than two hours after arriving at the base, Tony successfully completed cooperation with the military, and the efficiency was extremely amazing. After reaching the cooperation, Tony didn't want to stay here any longer and wanted to leave early and return. Seeing that Tony had a firm attitude and the others didn't want to stay too long, they immediately planned to send someone to take Tony back to the airport. Because this place has been plagued by war all year round, just in case, the military brass specially sent a motorcade to escort Tony to ensure his safety. But even so, on the way back to the airport, the army still had an accident. As if they had known that they would pass by here. Just after the convoy arrived in this area, the next moment, violent artillery fire rang out. Before Tony could react, the next moment, a bomb suddenly exploded under the car he was in. Following a period of spinning, Tony's vision went dark and he lost consciousness instantly. When Tony opened his eyes again and looked at the dark environment in front of him, Tony's eyes were suddenly filled with confusion. Where is this? He struggled to get up, but just when Tony made a move, he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his chest, which made him groan and his cheeks twitched slightly. Looking down, Tony's face suddenly turned dark and he couldn't help shouting. Shed, what is this? Looking down along his gaze, I saw two wires on his chest. They spread outward from the chest and were directly connected to a small battery not far from him. Look, it looks inexplicably a bit strange. What's going on? Damn it, can someone get this thing off my hands? As he spoke, Tony reached out and grabbed the two wires in his chest and was about to pull them out immediately. Wait a minute, it. If you do this, I'm afraid I won't be able to guarantee your safety. Hearing this, Tony subconsciously looked to the side following the source of the sound. Not far from Tony, a middle-aged man who looked a little thin slowly emerged from the darkness, came to Tony, pushed up the glasses on the bridge of his nose, and said calmly, Who are you? Looking at the person coming, Tony frowned and asked with an ugly expression, What exactly did you do to me? What did I do? The man smiled and said, What I did was save your life. Maybe you can't remember it now, but when you were sent here, your chest had been penetrated by a lot of shrapnel. If you couldn't be treated in time, you probably wouldn't be alive until now. Although I have tried my best to remove a lot of shrapnel during the operation, unfortunately there are still many remaining in your body. And with the flow of blood in your body, they are still rushing toward your heart. If you don't find a way to stop it, you still won't be able to survive. After hearing this, Tony's face softened and he said thoughtfully, So what is this thing on my chest now? It's an electromagnet, and it's connected to the car battery. With it, it can stop shrapnel from entering your heart. After listening to the other party's explanation, Tony silently zipped up his coat, completely covering his chest. After regaining his composure, Tony kept looking around. When he looked at a camera above the cave at 250, Tony's eyes narrowed and his face turned slightly a little. By the way, Tony, do you remember? We met once before, at a technology conference in Bern. Really? But I have no impression at all. Tony said casually. I think so. The man chuckled. If you hadn't been drunk at that time, you might have been able to remember something. While the two were chatting, the next moment, a dull sound suddenly came from the steel gate not far from the two. What happened? Hearing this strange noise, Tony's expression tightened, and he asked quickly. Get up quickly. The man's face suddenly became nervous, and he quickly came to Tony's side, pulled him to stand up from the bed and ordered, Learn what I do later. Got it? Quick. Raise your hands first. As he said that, the man quickly put his hands behind his head, his eyes signaling to Tony. Although Tony was a little confused, he followed his lead and followed suit. Soon, as the door opened, an armed team with weapons in their hands and fierce eyes walked towards the two of them. After seeing this team, especially the firearms in their hands, Tony's pupils shrank instantly and he was filled with surprise and uncertainty. Chapter 258, Part 1 There was no other reason than that the weapon in the opponent's hand looked too familiar. Tony recalled it immediately after thinking about it for a moment. The firearm in the opponent's hand was the latest product launched by their start group a year ago, and this firearm was designed by himself so he was naturally very familiar with it. But this product was specially supplied to the military of the Eagle Country and has never been sold to the outside world. Why it appears here now is something that puzzles Tony. He didn't let him think for long. Then, in the center of the team, the leader came to the two of them and said something in a language that Tony couldn't understand at all. When Tony was confused about what he said, the man beside him translated for him in time. He said, Welcome Tony Stark, the most famous mass murderer in the history of Eagle Nation. Nice to meet you. He wants you to build him a missile, the Jericho missile you sold to the military before. As he spoke, the man handed over the photo of the Jericho missile. Looking at the photo in front of him, Tony was filled with doubts. Without thinking much, he said decisively, I reject. As soon as he finished speaking, 
The leader's face suddenly became ugly, his eyes were gloomy, he glanced at Tony, and then said something to the people on both sides. Immediately afterwards, before Tony could react, someone on both sides stood up, grabbed Tony tightly and walked towards the sink nearby. Plop. He pushed Tony's head into the water hard until Tony felt that he was about to suffocate, then he picked him up from the water again. After torturing Tony several times in this way, Tony finally recognized the reality, and Inchin agreed. Seeing this, the man nodded with satisfaction, and then led Tony and the two of them out of the cave. After walking out of the cave, Tony looked around first, and then his eyes were immediately attracted by the weapons piled around him. Like the firearms he had seen before, these weapons were also produced by Stark Industries, and most of them were models that had not been released to the public. Looking at these brand new weapons, Tony became even more confused. But he also learned the lesson just now, so he remained silent on the road, just observing silently. After taking Tony around the base, the man continued to say something. Seeing this, the man on the side also continued to translate. They have all the materials you need to make the Jericho missile. Next, you just need to make a list of materials, and they will deliver it to you. And you'd better start doing it right away. If you do it right, they'll let you go. After saying this, the other party stretched out his right hand and showed a slightly friendly smile on his face. Tony also stretched out his hand and held it together. Although a smile appeared on his face, his mood was not as bright as the smile on his face at this moment. Tony knew very well that even if he really made the Jericho missile, according to the other party's request, the other party would never let him go. Maybe the day he actually completes it will be the last moment of his life. Looking around again, Tony had a vague idea in his mind. Back in the cave, Tony sat on a stone bench, motionless, lost in thought. When the man on the side saw this, he thought Tony had given up hope. A trace of unbearability flashed across his face, and then he stepped forward and comforted. There must be people outside looking for your whereabouts, but they definitely can't find you in these mountains. If it goes down, we must learn to save ourselves before we can control it. Tony Stark, are you going to give up your last hope like this? Seeing that Tony still had no reaction, the other person's face couldn't help but become more worried, and he started talking more and more. Finally, Tony woke up from his reverie again, turned his head to look at the other person, a trace of helplessness flashed across his face. Who told you I had to give up hope? I was just thinking about how to get out. Are you thinking too much? Upon hearing this, the other party's face suddenly showed a hint of expectation, and he quickly asked, Then have you thought of any good ideas now? Maybe. Tony smiled noncommittally, not intending to reveal his true plan. In fact, while thinking just now, a flash of inspiration suddenly flashed in Tony's mind. The figure of Bumblebee appeared in his mind unconsciously, thinking of the other party's special form, and suddenly he had such an idea in his mind. If he could build a humanoid robot like Bumblebee, and then equip the robot with a large number of weapons, then Tony was confident that with the firepower of the robot he built, he would be able to lead them out of the cave and escape. Sky. This idea just came out, and the next moment, Tony had a new idea in his mind. If they simply create a robot, no matter how ferocious the robot's firepower is, their safety cannot be guaranteed. If they are accidentally hit by the opponent, they will still not be able to survive. In that case, yes. Then why not create a humanoid armor that they can wear on their bodies, so that they don't have to worry about their own safety? The more he thought about it, the more he felt that his idea was feasible. After having a general idea, Tony also made a series of extensions along his idea. If you want to realize your idea, you must first provide the corresponding power source for this suit of armor. Only when driven by sufficient energy will this suit of armor have the ability to move. As long as the power supply problem can be solved, the rest of the armor manufacturing and weapon mounting will not be a problem for Tony at all. In addition, in addition to his own armor, he now also needs a brand new power source to replace the bulky car battery in his hand. Otherwise, if he takes such a big guy with him during his escape, there is no doubt that when Zhao Zhao, it's also a drag. As for how to solve the power problem, Tony already had an idea in mind. After deciding on the idea, Tony suddenly became energetic. Knowing that the time was limited, he started to act immediately without too much delay. Just as Tony was devoted to self-rescue, on the other side, Chen Luo also got information about Tony's disappearance on TV. After a brief moment of shock, Chen Luo instantly recalled this familiar scene and his eyes suddenly became a little complicated. Chin Luo knows very well that it won't be long before Tony returns again, and the Iron Man who has astonished the world will be born. With the birth of Iron Man, the magnificent superhero era is finally about to begin. It seems that I can no longer live a peaceful life for too long. Scanning his eyes towards this cozy-looking cabin, Chin Luo sighed slightly in his heart, his eyes full of sighs. Chapter 259, Part 1 But then again, Although Chin Luo knew that Tony succeeded in metamorphosis and became Iron Man precisely because of experiencing this crisis. But the world now is different from what Chin Luo knew before. Chin Luo couldn't guarantee whether Tony would really be safe in this crisis. If something happened and Tony died, 
Chen Luo would undoubtedly not want to see it. Not to mention the significant impact Tony will have on the next superhero era, let's just talk about the relationship between Tony and Chen Luo. He will not just watch something happen to Tony. Therefore, in order to ensure Tony's safety, Chen Luo immediately decided to leave for Afghanistan to search for Tony's whereabouts. After making a decision in his mind, Chen Luo also talked about his plan with May and Peter during the next breakfast. May Peter, I may have some things to deal with in the next few days, so I may not be able to go home in a short time. Hearing this, May and Peter immediately stopped eating, and both raised their heads to look at Chen Luo, with different expressions on their faces. What happened? May said with some confusion on her face. It's no big deal. Chen Luo shook his head with a smile and replied, I have a friend who seems to have had an accident there and may need my help. But this problem is not big. It should be solved by 313 in a few days. Is that so? May nodded slightly, with a hint of concern on her face. I understand. We will take care of ourselves these days, so be careful. Don't worry. I'll be back when the matter over there is taken care of. Seeing the smile on Chin Luo's face, May finally let go of her worries, said nothing more, lowered her head and ate breakfast quietly. But on the other hand, Peter is more than that. After breakfast, while May went to the kitchen to wash dishes, Peter did not rush out to go to school. Instead, he quietly came to Chen Luo and asked in a low voice with a nervous expression, Chen, did something happen to you over there? Is there any danger? There was no reason for Peter not to worry. After all, he was the one who knew part of Chen Luo's secrets, so when he heard that Chen Luo was going out for something, the first thing that came to his mind was that he was worried that Chen Luo would be in any danger. You must know that Chen Luo has dealt with aliens. If he encounters something similar this time, there is no guarantee that there will be no accidents in the event of a battle. Although Peter also knows that Chen Luo is not an ordinary person, Peter does not have a clear judgment about Chen Luo's current strength, so it is not surprising that he has such worries. Seeing the worried look on Peter's face, Chen Luo felt a little warm in his heart, smiled and rubbed his hair. Don't worry, Peter, nothing will happen to me. It's up to you to take care of the family these days. I will keep Bumblebee here. If anything happens at home, just ask Bumblebee. He will help you. I know. After hearing Chen Luo's words, Peter felt relieved, refreshed, and quickly assured. Okay, let's go to school. If you don't go, you'll be late. Patting the back of his head, Chen Luo urged with a smile. After sending Peter away, Chen Luo then went out and came to Bumblebee on the lawn outside the door. After telling him some things, the next moment Bumblebee's body shook slightly to express his understanding. After giving these instructions, Chen Luo was relieved and planned to take action. However, just as he was about to leave, the next moment, the phone on him suddenly rang. Chin, what do you want from me? After answering the phone, Chen Luo asked with some confusion. Chun, did you see the news this morning? Tony, I saw it. Chen Luo nodded, and then said, I was planning to go over there, and see if I could find Tony's whereabouts. Is that so? That's great. On the other end of the phone, Chin immediately breathed a sigh of relief after hearing Chen Luo's answer. Pepper called me just now, and wanted us to help to see if we can rescue Tony. Pepper? Upon hearing the name, Chen Luo's eyes flashed and he understood immediately. This is Tony's real girlfriend in the future. Although the two have not officially gotten together yet, at this point in time, the relationship between the two is only a layer of paper. It is normal to care about Tony's safety. What's more, if the relationship between the two is not close, act, the other party will not know Chin's contact information. After some inquiries, Chen Luo immediately understood that over the years, Tony had brought each other to visit the college more than once. As time went by, Pepper, Chin, Aurora and others also became good friends. Friend. Therefore, after learning the news that Tony was missing, he immediately thought of asking Chin and others for help. After understanding the whole story, Chin Luo nodded and then said, I understand. Leave this matter to me. Jean, you tell Pepper, and I will bring Tony back safely. Hearing Chin Luo's voice, Chin finally felt relieved and said, Then be careful. After the two chatted for a while, Chin Luo hung up the phone and started taking action. With a thought in his mind, Chin Luo suddenly disappeared from where he was as the teleportation ability was activated. In less than an hour, Chin Luoli arrived at the destination of his trip. Looking at the endless desert in front of him, Chin Luo frowned slightly and suddenly felt a headache. Looks like it's going to take a little longer. After all, Chin Luo had no clue about Tony's current whereabouts, so he could only start investigating step by step. And because of careful inspection, it is obvious that teleportation ability is not suitable for use here. The most efficient way is to use flight ability for reconnaissance. However, although its flight speed is about twice the speed of sound, compared with the magical skill of teleportation, the gap is obviously still very obvious. Therefore, if you want to successfully find Tony's location, it will take a long time. Although it was a bit troublesome, Chin Luo had no other choice now. After sighing slightly, he immediately started taking action. The bat transformation was activated instantly, and with a fierce flap of his wings behind him, 
Chin Luo soared into the sky and reached an altitude of more than a thousand meters. A long white wave of air streaked across the sky. He promised to go to full speed, looked at the ground with all his concentration, and began to search. Two days passed in the blink of an eye. Finally, with Chin Luo's unremitting efforts day and night, that night, Chin Luo seemed to have discovered something in the sky. His eyes suddenly focused, and he stopped moving. The cover of the night had no effect on Chin Luo, so he could clearly see that in the valley at his feet. Someone was patrolling it from time to time. It looked very. Chin Luo was instantly refreshed by the other party's distinctive clothes. In order to confirm what he was thinking, Chin Luo retracted his wings with a thought, and then immediately used his teleportation ability to reach the valley below. With the mental power fully activated, the Proxima Midnight Magic is activated. Anyone who sees Chin Luo along the way will be instantly confused by his hypnotic ability spell. Therefore, Chin Luo seemed to have completely disappeared in their eyes. Even if Chin Luo swaggered past them, they completely turned a blind eye. So without alerting anyone, Chin Luo went all the way to the inside of the cave. After some searching, Chin Luo finally stopped in front of a heavy-looking steel gate. Looking through the small window above the door and looking at the familiar figure inside, the corners of Chin Luo's mouth curled up slightly. Finally found. Chapter 260, Part 1. Tony, this guy, seems to be doing pretty well. Through the window, watching Tony immersed in his work with a serious look on his face, Chin Luo touched his chin and murmured with interest. At this moment, Tony has changed a lot from when they parted ways. His hair is disheveled, his clothes are shabby, and he looks very sloppy. And the most eye-catching thing was the bright blue light that couldn't be concealed on Tony's chest under the other party's worn gray short sleeves. Looking at the light on the other person's chest, Chin Luo knew in his heart that it was probably the first-generation small reactor built by Tony. It is precisely because of the existence of the small reactor that it can provide energy for the armor Tony built later, thus exerting great strength. Except for the small reactor on his chest, although Tony looks a little sloppy now, in contrast, his mental outlook is completely different. The cynical smile in the past has completely disappeared now. Tony's face is full of seriousness and seriousness. Although his body looks a little thinner, it has become stronger than before. In addition, after experiencing this incident, Tony's temperament has become more mature and steady, his eyes are shining with perseverance, and his whole body exudes a unique charm. Seeing these changes in the other party's body, Chin Luo couldn't help but feel secretly. There is no doubt that the current Tony and the Iron Man in his memory have gradually overlapped, and they are no longer distinguishable from each other. After looking around, Chin Luo gave up the idea of rescuing Tony after confirming that Tony was not in any danger for the time being. Now is the critical moment for Tony's metamorphosis, and he doesn't want any surprises to happen. Anyway, it looks like Tony will be able to successfully create the first generation armor in just a few days. It would be better to wait here for a few days. If something happens, he will take action at worst. Thinking of this, Chin Luo suddenly made a decision in his heart. At the same moment that Chin Luo left, Tony, who was immersed in building armor inside the cave, suddenly raised his head and looked out the door as if he sensed something. However, when he saw the empty scene outside the door, Tony frowned and doubt flashed in his eyes. What's wrong Tony, what happened? Sensing Tony's abnormality, Ethan, who was Tony's assistant, asked curiously. Nothing. Hearing Ethan's words, Tony suddenly came back to his senses and shook his head. Maybe it was my misunderstanding. I felt like someone was watching us outside the door just now. Yeah. Hearing this, Ethan also turned his head and looked out the door with some curiosity. But obviously, now that Chen Luo has left, he definitely can't see anything. Okay, don't mention so much. Tony spoke again. We still have a lot of work to do. As he spoke, Tony's eyes subconsciously moved to the drawings on the workbench in front of him, with a glint of eagerness flashing in his eyes. As long as we can build this big guy, then we have hope of jumping out. Ethan nodded repeatedly, with a glimmer of hope on his face. It must be possible. Tony, we can definitely escape from here. That's right. Tony nodded heavily, feeling confident. Tony has absolute confidence in his invention. He believes that with the power of the armor he created, he can definitely help them escape. Okay, Ethan, don't talk so much now. Let's start working first. After all, we don't have much time left. I know. But Tony, According to your estimate, how long will it take for us to complete this set of armor? I have already calculated it. Judging from our current speed, it will probably take about five days to complete. Five days? Isn't that the day when the other party requires us to deliver the missiles? That's right, that's the day. Tony nodded slightly, as if recalling something, a cold light flashed in his eyes. At that time, when our armor is completed, it will be time for us to fight back. I can't wait to give them a big gift. Thinking that when the armor was completed, he would be able to take revenge on those people. Tony felt even more motivated, and he and Ethan threw themselves into the work with great enthusiasm. Zero please give me flowers, 
Zero ding 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 ding. Inside the cave, there was an intensive banging sound, and the people outside the cave knew nothing about what Tony and the two were doing at the moment. In this base, Chin Luo also used the hypnotic ability technique to achieve hypnotic ability on one of the militants, and then occupied his lair, waiting here for the moment when Tony was done. In the blink of an eye, five days have passed. Things have been going very smoothly here since this time. Chin Luo went to the cave from time to time every day to check on the condition of Tony and Tony. After making sure that the other party was safe and sound, he turned around and left again. During this period, except for urging Tony to speed up from time to time, the armed men who took Tony out rarely came in to disturb him at other times. Zero therefore, this gave Tony and the two of them plenty of time to build the armor. After the two people worked hard day and night, finally, on this last day, they finally completed the work. Finally done. Wiping the dark sweat on his face, Tony looked straight at the masterpiece in front of him, with an inexplicable light shining in his eyes. Yeah, we're finally done. Ethan's tone on the side was a little trembling, and he stretched out his hand to touch the humanoid armor in front of him, with the light of hope surging in his eyes. With it, we will definitely be able to escape from here. That's definitely. Tony nodded vigorously, his eyes filled with anger. And we have to make them pay the price. After saying this, Tony knew that today was the deadline given by the other party. In order to avoid any surprises, he did not say anything more. He quickly stepped forward and entered the armor. He began to put it on and said, Ethan, come and help. Be sure to put on the armor before they come. Otherwise it will be too late. Hearing Tony's reminder, Ethan was shocked and reacted immediately. He didn't dare to neglect and hurriedly stepped forward to help. However, they were really afraid that something might happen. While the two of them were busy putting on their armor, a rapid knocking sound came from Yaren at the door on the other side. Hearing the noise coming from outside the door, Tony and Tony's expressions suddenly changed. Chapter 261, Part 1 Damn, they're coming. Hearing the noise coming from outside the door, Tony's expression changed, and his eyes were full of anxiety. Quick, Ethan. Activate the startup program. After hearing Tony's voice, Ethan woke up as if from a dream. He quickly came to the console next to him, and quickly typed on the keyboard with both hands. After some operations, he finally activated the program. Officially started. Ethan, how much longer will it take? At this moment, Tony had already put on the steel armor, so he couldn't see the situation on the console. He looked straight towards the door, with an even more anxious look in his eyes. Already started. Ethan wiped the cold sweat on his head, listened to the increasingly frequent noise not far away, and looked at the progress bar slowly moving forward on the computer screen at this moment, subconsciously accepting his fist. Hearing Ethan's answer, Tony was relieved at first, but then he seemed to think of something again and asked quickly, how long will it take for 910 to officially activate the armor? It'll probably take another three minutes or so. What? You still need this. Tony frowned and his face suddenly darkened. If the group of people responsible for guarding have not come yet, then this time is enough for them, but by chance, the other party arrived at this time. In this way, their time it has undoubtedly become more urgent. You must know that the other party has now arrived outside the gate. Once the other party discovers something strange inside, they will definitely rush in and stop it without hesitation. By then, if the program still cannot be successfully activated, then they will have no hope of escaping. So now while the two of them are waiting for the program to be activated, they are also praying secretly in their hearts. I pray that my actions on this side will not be noticed by the other party. Just as the two of them stared straight ahead and waited with bated breath, outside the gate, a team of about dozens of people had already arrived. Because today is the deadline for the delivery of Jericho missiles, the other party also came to the door early to wait. The leader looked through the window on the door and looked into the cave. Now nearly a week has passed since the date that Tony agreed with them. Now, it is time for them to accept the results. However, just as he looked expectantly into the cave, after glancing around, his face suddenly became gloomy at a speed visible to the naked eye. Jaligulu, although I couldn't hear clearly what he said, judging from his angry expression, the other party must be in a very bad mood now. Not seeing the shadow of the missile he wanted inside, the other party's eyes flashed with murderous intent, then he turned to look behind him and said something to the people behind him. Immediately afterwards, one of the team members stepped forward, took out a bunch of keys from his arms, and immediately prepared to open the door. Click. The sound of the key turning was heard. Upon hearing this sound, Tony and Tony's expressions suddenly changed. Damn, they're coming in. Cold sweat broke out on Tony's face, and he quickly asked Ethan, Ethan, how long will it take? Two minutes more. Hearing Ethan's answer, Tony's face changed. He struggled in his heart for a long time. Finally, he sighed deeply and said softly, It's hopeless, Ethan. It's too late. Deactivate the program, put me down, and turn on self-exposure mode. As long as the armor is destroyed, they shouldn't find anything. Then I will tell you that there was an accident in the experiment, 
and see if I can buy us a few more days. Although the plan to escape had been determined early, in order to prevent the escape from failing, Tony also left a way out for them. The specific situation is like this. Once the opponent discovers his actions in advance, in order to ensure that the armor will not be discovered by the opponent, Tony has embedded a self-exposure program in the armor in advance to ensure that the armor can be destroyed smoothly. At that time, he can use the destruction of the armor as an excuse, saying that some kind of accident occurred during the process of manufacturing the missile, so it will take a little more time. In this way, as long as the other party still wants to get the Jericho missile from him, they will have to choose to let them go. But this is only the best result, and his plan also has risks. If the other party does not agree to the extension, then today is likely to be the last moment of their lives. Although there is a risk of losing his life, Tony has no other choice now. Judging from the opponent's current actions, he will definitely reach them in less than two minutes. And once their little moves are discovered by the other party, there is no chance of them surviving. It's just the last bit. If you can give me a few more minutes, then we may really be able to escape. Staring at the door, Tony's eyes were full of regret. Isn't that the case with Ethan? His eyes kept glancing back and forth between Tony and the door. Finally, Ethan seemed to have figured something out and made up his mind. A trace of determination flashed in his eyes. No, Tony, we can't give up yet. With less than two minutes left, we will definitely be able to escape from here successfully. Having said this, Ethan slowly looked back at Tony. A smile appeared on his face. His tone was soft but full of determination. Tony, you have done enough, now leave it to me. I'll hold off for you for two minutes. Besides, Ethan paused and then said, if I can't go back this time, Tony, please go and see Kumala's place. Tell my family I love them. Boom. As soon as he finished speaking, the next moment, as everyone outside opened the door, two homemade bombs made by Tony were hanging on the door handle inside the door. As soon as the opponent pushed the door open, the two bombs were instantly activated and exploded, accompanied by a violent burst of fire and a powerful shockwave. The steel gate in front of him was instantly blasted into pieces. The fragments flew towards the two people outside the door at a speed that was invisible to the naked eye. Before the two had time to react, they were pierced by countless fragments that came one after another, flying backwards for several meters, and then there was no more sound. Even other people who were some distance away from the gate were affected by the explosion. They all lay on the ground, as if their brains had been hit hard. They couldn't get up for a long time. Good chance. Seeing the scene in front of him, Ethan quickly ran towards the door without thinking, picked up the 3.9 gun that someone dropped, and fired a bunch of bullets at everyone outside. In an instant, the fierce fire sounded again. T. RT. Follow the plan. Don't act without permission. Watching Ethan's back disappear from his sight, Tony's expression changed, and he called anxiously for him to come back. However, Ethan seemed unable to hear his call, and lowered his head towards the outside of the cave. Rushed in the direction, listening to the sound of the firefight getting further and further away from him, Tony couldn't help but become more anxious. However, no matter how anxious he is now, without Ethan's help, he can't close the startup program. He can only watch the progress bar keep moving forward, waiting here motionless. In his mind, he recalled what Ethan had said to him before, and Tony couldn't help but feel a bad premonition in his heart. Chapter 262, Part 1 While Tony is here waiting for the armor to be activated, on the other side, in the passage outside the gate, Ethan raised the gun in his hand high, pulled the trigger like a vent, lowered his head, shouted, and rushed forward. Because he had never been exposed to firearms before, it is conceivable that Ethan's operation did not cause any harm to the opponent. But that doesn't mean that everything Ethan did was in vain. Hearing the intensive firing, everyone in the base was immediately attracted to their attention, and they all rushed in the direction of Ethan. At the same time, outside the gate where Tony was, a group of militants who had been stunned by the explosion finally came to their senses. When they heard the sound of fire coming not far away, they thought Tony and the two had escaped from here. So they no longer cared about this place and immediately ran towards Fongnan where Ethan was. Soon, after Ethan rushed out of a corner in front of this passage, the next moment, when Ethan finally saw clearly what was waiting for him ahead, he suddenly stopped. At this moment, less than 10 meters away from him, a bright light came from the entrance of the cave in front. Apparently after his rampage, he was now almost at the exit. But just a few meters away from the entrance of the cave, a team of about dozens of people was standing there, fully armed, motionless, all looking in the direction of Ethan, their eyes extremely cold. The next moment, before Ethan could react, dozens of black guns were pointed at him. If he dared to make any move, he would be killed on the spot in the next moment. And it's not over yet. Immediately afterwards, a burst of dense footsteps came from behind him, and his peripheral vision turned back. When he saw the scene behind him clearly, Ethan felt a chill in his heart. After a full-speed pursuit, the team originally affected by the explosion finally caught up. 
Looking at Ethan in front of him, the leader's face was filled with murderous intent. Without saying a word, he raised the firearm in his hand to shoot him. Looking at the pursuers in front and behind, not only did Ethan have no fear on his face, on the contrary, he was secretly relieved. Now that these people have been attracted to him, it means that no one from Tony's side has bothered him. Calculating the time, it only takes more than 10 seconds for the program to be officially activated. By then, Tony will have hope of escaping. Definitely, that was only for Tony. As for himself, when he decided to delay time, he was already prepared to leave and never come back. The leader of the team in front of Ethan was the leader of the base. He looked at the calm expression on Ethan's face at this moment, and for some reason, a bad premonition suddenly flashed in his heart. His sinister eyes moved around, and soon he seemed to notice something. His face changed, and murderous intent surged in his eyes. Damn, where's Tony? Why didn't you see him? Tony? Ethan said with a smile on his face. You want to find him? Unfortunately, it's too late now. You can't trap him here now. Tony will get out of here soon. As soon as these words came out, the opponent instantly became extremely angry, his face was gloomy, and he waved his right hand vigorously. This damn guy, he's here to attract our attention. Kill him first, and then go find Tony. Yes. Nearly a hundred guns from both sides of Ethan's front and back were pointed at him, without any hesitation, and they instantly pulled the trigger. Looking at the other party's movements, Ethan showed no intention of resisting and slowly closed his eyes, quietly waiting for death to come. But after a while, after still not hearing the sound of fire, Ethan, who was a little confused, finally slowly opened his eyes. However, when he regained his sight again and saw the scene in the cave clearly, the next moment, Ethan's expression suddenly became dull. What the hell happened? At this moment, on both sides of him, the team that originally numbered nearly a hundred people all fell to the ground, and there was no more sound. What made him feel a little weirder was that the people who were lying on the ground looked extremely dry all over. Their skin was like old tree bark. Their faces were frightened as if they had seen some horrific scene. Their eyes were wide open, and they looked scary. I couldn't help but feel shocked. Looking at the nearly a hundred mummies on the ground, Ethan was feeling a little uneasy. The next moment, a strange voice sounded from behind him. How's it going? Are you okay? Hearing this voice, Ethan froze, turned around slowly, and looked behind him. Seeing his action, Chen Luo smiled and shook his head. Don't be nervous. I have no ill intentions towards you. Tony and I are good friends, and I'm here to save him this time. Tony's friend? Hearing this, Ethan felt relieved immediately. Looking at you, you should also know Tony, right? How is it? Where is he now? Tony, he is now? Ethan was about to answer, but at the next moment, there was a dull mechanical sound, and then, a giant mecha more than two meters high appeared from behind the two people. At the same time, a giant mecha that made the two people extremely a familiar voice sounded from inside the mecha. Ethan, where are you? Tony was anxiously looking for Ethan's whereabouts. Just as he had just crossed the corner in front of him and saw clearly the two figures standing in front of him at the moment, Tony was startled at first, and then his face lit up. Chen? Why are you here? What do you think? Chen Luo rolled her eyes at him and said helplessly, If you hadn't disappeared inexplicably, I might still be dating Chen now. Can you blame me for this 977? Tony replied unceremoniously, It's not like I wanted to be caught here. Besides, it's not like you haven't seen what I'm like now. Even if you don't come to save me, I can get out of here on my own. Although Tony looked unconvinced, he immediately felt at ease after seeing Chen Luo arriving. Especially seeing Ethan who was intact next to Chen Luo at this moment, Tony breathed a sigh of relief and couldn't help but feel a little more grateful to Chen Luo. Yes, yes, you are right. Chen Luo waved his hand and said with a relaxed expression, Then what's next? Do we leave from here? Wait a minute. Although they were all safe now, Tony obviously didn't want to leave here like this. His face was gloomy. He gritted his teeth and said in a few words, I still have some gifts that I haven't given away yet. Then it's up to you. Chen Luo shrugged and said with an indifferent expression, As for the big guy Tony is wearing now, no one else in this base can pose any threat to him. So Chen Hao definitely won't worry. Then Chen Luo and the two waited quietly in the cave. Not long after, as the sound of fire outside the cave gradually faded away and silence returned, the next moment, Tony's figure slowly emerged from the cave entrance. Okay, let's go. Chapter 263, Part 1 Boom! Flames rose up in the valley, violent flames erupted and spread crazily in all directions, and explosions continued to sound. In an instant, the valley where Tony and the two were originally turned into a sea of fire. Nearly a thousand meters in the sky, Chin Luo was slowly flying forward in the sky. Behind him were two Tonys who were wrapped in two purple-red energy and also floating in the air. The three of them looked at the scene below, with different expressions on their faces. 
Tony seemed very calm. After all, he knew Chen Luo's true identity, so he naturally knew that his friend's strength was far beyond what most people imagined. Although he has never seen this kind of flight ability before, but considering the teleportation ability that Chen Luo has demonstrated before, knowing flight ability is nothing to be surprised about. Therefore, even though Tony is now thousands of meters high in the sky, he does not feel the slightest fear. On the contrary, his face is full of excitement at this moment, and he said with great interest, Oh, so this is what flight feels like? It's amazing. Actually, the suit of armor I made also has flight ability, but it's a pity that you can't see it. But this is not a big problem. After I go home, I will make a set of armor again. By then, I will definitely be able to fly in the sky on my own. I have already thought about it. When my new armor is built, I will give it a new name. Let me think about it. Now that I have it, how about calling it Mark 1? Isn't this a cool name? Unlike Tony, who is a chatty person, on the other side, Ethan closed his eyes tightly, his body was shaking slightly, his hands were clasped together, and he was mumbling, as if he was praying for something. But it's no wonder Ethan behaves like this. After all, in his previous life of more than 40 years, whether it was the knowledge he learned or his outlook on life, he was a complete atheist, believing in the supremacy of science. Idea. But what he saw today completely shattered his belief. After seeing the inhuman power displayed by Chen Luo, Ethan's worldview suddenly became fragmented. Even though some time has passed now, he is still in a daze, as if he still cannot accept this fact. Definitely, this has nothing to do with his current performance. The reason why he kept his eyes closed was very simple. Afraid of heights. It was a little better at first, but as they got higher and higher from the ground, Ethan's behavior became more and more obvious. Now, even if he has closed his eyes tightly, there are still some subtle symptoms in his body. Reaction. But fortunately, his reaction did not last long. After leaving the valley, Chin Luo led the two of them to slowly land to the ground. When his feet stood on the ground again, Ethan finally breathed a long sigh of relief. His body softened, and he collapsed on the ground. After resting for a while, the two of them finally calmed down before Chin Lu spoke again. So what's next? Do you plan to go back together? Or? Chin Luo had already known Tony before leaving. Needless to say, Tony would definitely go back to New York with him. However, Ethan's destination was different from theirs. Now that he had finally escaped from there, he definitely wanted to go back. In my hometown, reunited with my family. Isn't this simple? Tony raised his eyebrows and immediately replied, I don't think it's better than this. Ethan, you go back with us first, and then I will send you a special plane to take you home. Anyway, this guy Chin is very fast. It won't take long for us to get back to New York, and it won't take you much time either. It sounds good, but... Having said this, Ethan subconsciously glanced at Chin Luo standing aside, with some lingering fear on his face and said, Are we going to fly back later? I'm worried that I can't bear it. Hearing this, Chin Luo and his two men's expressions suddenly froze. The two of them were a little helpless about Ethan's fear of heights. In fact, to be honest, if Ethan was not directly exposed to high altitudes like just now, but could go back by plane, his symptoms might be better, but in this place now, they are surrounded by a desert, so where can they find a plane to take them on? So when he thought that he might have to stay in the sky for a long time, Ethan subconsciously felt a little weak in his legs and feet. Regarding Ethan's worries, Chin Luo was stunned for a moment, then laughed and said, I think you don't have to worry about this. If you want to go back, you don't have to fly. Real? Ethan's eyes lit up, and his face was suddenly filled with anticipation. Definitely. Chin Luo smiled and nodded. Just when he was about to say something, the next moment, his eyes inadvertently glanced behind the two of them, as if he had discovered something. He paused and then said slowly, but now it seems that I don't need to take you back, HMM? A trace of doubt flashed in Tony's eyes, and he was about to say something, but at the next moment, the sound of a propeller turning from far to near gradually fell into his ears. Subconsciously, he turned around and looked towards the source of the sound. When he saw the object appearing in the sky behind him, Tony finally understood the meaning of Chin Luo's words just now. Not far away from them, a black spot gradually began to enlarge. When it reached the sky above their heads, even Ethan could see it clearly. Looking at the helicopter flying towards them in the sky, Ethan's face a hint of surprise suddenly appeared on his face. He couldn't wait to reach out and shout, hoping to get the attention of the helicopter above. After a while, the helicopter above discovered the presence of Tony and the others below. After seeing Tony standing there perfectly fine, in the helicopter, Rhodes, who was originally anxious, suddenly became happy and quickly called for the helicopter to arrive. The two landed in front. Great. We can finally go back, good? There was a trace of relief on Tony's face, and he subconsciously turned to look in the direction of Chin Luo. However, when he just turned around, he saw that Chin Luo had quietly disappeared from the place. This guy. Turning his eyes, Tony understood something instantly. He sighed softly, shook his head, 
and then pulled Ethan beside him and walked forward. Tony. Seeing Tony walking towards him, Rhodes, who couldn't hold himself back for a long time, immediately stepped forward and gave him a big hug. His face was a little excited, and he punched his chest hard and said, You bastard, I knew you would be fine. After saying this, Rhodes looked at Tony's dusty appearance, remained silent for a while, and then said seriously, Don't worry, Tony, we'll be home soon. Sounds good. Tony replied with a smile and a nod. Chapter 264, Part 1 A few hours later, inside a military base in New York, in a large airport, two people were standing here, looking around, waiting anxiously. The visitors were none other than Tony's driver, Happy, and his personal secretary, Pepper Pepper. After learning that Tony had been rescued safely, the two immediately came to the airport and began waiting for Tony's arrival. Until now, the two of them have been waiting for more than three hours. It was now noon, the sky was clear and cloudless, and the sun was shining across the sky. The dazzling light enveloped the earth and shone on the two people who had been waiting for a long time. As the temperature continued to rise, their bodies began to show signs of warmth. Finally, Happy on the side seemed to see something. He narrowed his eyes and looked at the black spot in the sky that was gradually approaching them, and his face gradually became excited. I saw it. It's Tony. Tony is finally coming. Pepper's body trembled slightly, and she quickly raised her head and followed Happy's line of sight. When she also saw the gradually growing black in the distance, Pepper's face was also flushed with excitement. She watched the black dot turn into a helicopter and came in front of them. At that moment, Pepper could no longer care about anything. Hurriedly stepped forward to greet him. The cabin door slowly opened. As Pepper waited eagerly, finally, a figure that was very familiar to her gradually emerged from it. She looked at the person without blinking. Gradually, the corners of Pepper's mouth slowly drew a trace. Radiant. With the support of Rhodes and Ethan, Wani walked step by step towards Pepper. Coming to her, looking at Pepper's red eyes, Tony couldn't help but feel a warm feeling in his heart. But even so, he still had a cynical smile on his face and said slightly teasingly, Why are your eyes suddenly red? Are you crying for your boss who has been missing for a long time? Pepper smiled and nodded slightly. They are tears of joy. After all, if you, the boss, come back, I won't have to find a new job. Congratulations then. After Tony said this, he changed the subject. But now that your vacation is over, we have other things to do later. With that said, Tony immediately turned around and walked towards his car. Seeing this, Pepper immediately followed without any hesitation. After saying goodbye to Rhodes, Tony took Ethan and Pepper into the car. Then, in the driver's seat, Happy asked without looking back, Sir, where should we go next? Go to the hospital. Pepper said before Tony could say anything. Although Tony seemed fine, a die, after all, Tony had been kidnapped by armed men in the past few days, so there was no guarantee that nothing would go wrong. So Pepper's first thought was to make sure Tony was safe and sound. But Tony had a different view. After Pepper finished speaking, Tony immediately reached out to stop him, and then said, Wait a minute, don't go to the hospital. Happy. Take me to that burger restaurant we often go to. I've missed it for a long time. By the way, Pepper, you can hold a press conference for me, by the way. I have something to announce. Press conference? Listening to Tony's words, Pepper suddenly frowned, his face full of doubts. Why? But at this moment, Tony did not answer directly. He just asked Happy to set off quickly. After hearing the instructions from the boss, Happy could only nod helplessly, start the car, and drive towards the destination. As for Ethan, who was sitting on the far right side of the car, he had been sitting there without saying a word since he got in the car. It was not until he heard Tony holding a press conference that he raised his head slightly and looked at Tony, his eyes inexplicable. Although he didn't know what Tony's purpose was, but for some reason, Ethan suddenly had a hunch in his heart that this time Tony might make some shocking decision at the upcoming press conference. Thinking of this, a curiosity suddenly arose in his heart. He wasn't kept waiting long. Less than two hours later, as a completely black car slowly drove towards New York City, it finally stopped slowly in front of a showroom owned by Stark Group. The moment the car stopped, a tall man wearing a black suit who had been waiting for a long time on the side of the road quickly came to the car door and looked at Tony's figure walking out of the car door after it opened. A sharp light flashed in his eyes, and then he immediately put on a happy smiling face, opened his arms, laughed and stepped forward to hug him. Haha, Tony, I knew you would run out of power. Long time no see, Uncle Stan. After hugging Obadiah, Tony walked toward the interior of the exhibition hall surrounded by countless reporters while chewing the burger in his hand. In the exhibition hall, watching Tony walking towards the press stage in front, Pepper was about to wait under the stage when a gentle voice suddenly sounded from beside her. Miss Potts, do you mind chatting for a few words? Next to Pepper, Phil Coulson appeared at some point with a friendly smile on his face and asked softly, Sorry, I won't be participating in the Q&A. The press conference will start soon. If you have any questions later, 
you can ask the boss after the conference starts. I think Miss Potts, you must have misunderstood. Phil Coulson shook his head and smiled. I am not a reporter. Let me formally introduce you, Phil Phil Coulson, an agent of the National Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Agency. While talking, Phil Coulson handed over his business card naturally. That's a tough name. Pepper casually replied after taking the business card. Indeed, but we have been improving recently, and we should streamline it in the future. Pepper smiled, then looked at the other party helplessly and said, You have to know that there has been national defense evidence before, the CIA and FBI have approached us? I know. Phil Coulson's face remained unchanged and he explained seriously, But we are an independent department, and our goals are clearer. We need to ask Mr. Scott about the specific circumstances of his escape. Looking into Phil Coulson's serious eyes, Pepper thought for a moment and then replied, I know. I will add this matter to my schedule. Thanks. After getting the answer he wanted, Phil Coulson smiled even more and nodded slightly. Then he said nothing more and turned to look in the direction of Tony, quietly waiting for the reception to officially begin. In the stands, Obadiah was about to say something. At this time, just below the stands, Tony sat casually, holding a burger in his hand, waving to the reporters in front of him with a relaxed expression, and said, Hey, everyone doesn't need to be so formal. Please sit down. Let's be casual, okay? After hearing this, everyone looked at each other in confusion for a while, and then they all sat on the floor without any intention of refusing, all looking at Tony, their eyes full of exploration. Then, under the gaze of everyone, Tony finally spoke slowly and began his speech. Chapter 265, Part 1 Nice to see you again, Stan. Tony first turned to look at Obadiah aside and greeted him. Me too. Obadiah showed a kind smile on his face, patted Tony's shoulder gently, and said with a smile. Just when he wanted to continue saying something, the next moment, Tony's voice sounded again. But I didn't have time to say goodbye to my dad. Tony slowly turned his head and looked at the people below. Actually, I have always wanted to ask him some questions. I want to ask him, what do you think of the company's actions? Has he ever struggled or had any doubts? Maybe he's the man in the news documentary. Looking around, Tony's expression gradually became serious. There, I saw many young people from our country buried on that land. And what killed them was the weapon I made to protect them. As soon as these words came out, everyone below suddenly changed their expressions, concentrated their attention, and began to listen to Tony's speech attentively. And Obadiah on the side is no exception. But unlike others, his face did look a little ugly at the moment. He subconsciously frowned and looked at Tony's side face. For some reason, a bad premonition suddenly flashed through his heart at this moment. At the same time, I also see that I have become a member of a system that does not want to take responsibility for this. Tony had just finished saying this, and then there was a sudden noise below, and then a reporter in a suit raised the recording pin in his hand and asked hurriedly, Mr. Stark, what exactly did you experience there? Can you tell us in detail? However, Tony paid no attention to their questions, but continued on by himself. It opened my eyes to the fact that I could do more for the world than just cause explosions. Therefore, from now on, I declare that I am completely shutting down Stark International's weapons production department, and this decision will take effect immediately, until I decide the real future of the company. As soon as the words fell, the next moment, the whole place suddenly became an uproar. Everyone stood up one after another. Their faces were replaced by shock. Looking at Tony's figure on the stage at this moment, everyone stepped forward and surrounded him, holding the recording pin in their hands high, and various questions emerged from their mouths one after another. However, their plan to continue interviewing Tony was destined to fail. After Tony said this, he immediately walked out of the exhibition hall, escorted by Happy, leaving no chance for others to ask questions. At the same time, Obadiah, who was also stunned on the spot, finally came to his senses. Looking at Tony's leaving figure, his eyes were filled with unconcealable anger, and murderous intent began to surge in his heart. But even so, faced with the current situation, he still had to calm down quickly, put on a smile, and started to fight in the paddock. Tony and his group came outside the exhibition hall and got in the car again. Finally, Ethan, who had been silent for a long time, started to take action. Turning to look at Tony, Ethan slowly raised his thumb, his face full of admiration. Tony, great job. Hearing the compliment from Ethan, a smile appeared on Tony's face, he nodded slightly to him, and then said, By the way, Ethan, I plan to go back to Los Angeles next. What are your arrangements? Will you be with me, or? I won't be with you. Ethan shook his head, with a trace of nostalgia flashing in his eyes. It's been a while since I left home, and my family must have been waiting impatiently. Now it's time for me to go back. Is this so? Hearing that Ethan had made up his mind to leave, Tony felt a trace of reluctance in his heart, but he still didn't say anything. He nodded lightly and said with a smile, In that case, 
I'll use my special plane to take you back. It's faster this way. There's no need for this. Before he could refuse, Tony waved his hand and said with a relaxed look, You don't have to be polite to me. Besides, it's not like I can't go back here. I still have an old friend here in New York. If you want to go back, just talk to him just borrow his special plane to go back. Zero, please give me flowers. After saying that, without giving him a chance to continue speaking, Tony immediately ordered Happy to drive them towards the airport quickly. Seeing this, although Ethan's face was very helpless, he did not continue to refuse. Soon, the group arrived at the airport, and Tony got out of the car. After watching the other party get on the plane, and watched the plane take off slowly, he planned to leave and return. As soon as he turned around, Tony seemed to suddenly remember something. He turned to Pepper and said, By the way, Pepper, please look for Ethan's address and see if there are any difficulties at their home. Provide some help, got it? Zero clear. Pepper nodded and agreed. After saying this, Tony finally relaxed, stretched out, and said lazily, Then I'll have nothing to do here. I finally got out of that hellish place, and now I can finally have a good rest. Rest? Let's go. It's time to go home. With that said, Tony immediately planned to leave. Looking at Tony's back as he was about to leave, Pepper subconsciously showed a trace of doubt on his face. Then do we need to book a flight now? Need not. Tony waved his hand and said with a relaxed look, This is that guy's territory, don't worry. Someone will help me arrange everything. As soon as he finished speaking, the next moment, the roar of an engine suddenly came from the distant sky. Then, under the watchful eyes of the three people, a small plane slowly landed in front of the three people. Immediately afterwards, a group of burly men in suits and leather shoes got off the plane one after another and came to Tony, saying because of his voice, Mr. Tony, let's take you home. Thank you for your hard work. Tony nodded calmly, then turned around and greeted the somewhat dazed Pepper. What are you waiting for? Come up here. Pepper woke up with a start and followed Tony towards the front with a confused look on her face. Chapter 266, Part 1 The day after Tony came home, after working overtime all night, and with the joint efforts of countless reporters, as soon as people opened their eyes the next day, they were enveloped in overwhelming news. Hashtag after a week, Tony returns safely. Hashtag Tony Stark holds a press conference. Hashtag shock. Tony announced at the reception that the Stark Group's weapons production department will be permanently closed from now on. Whether it's newspapers, radio, or news, all media channels are occupied today by Tony's safe return and what we said at the reception. And when they heard that Tony had decided to close the weapons production department, the whole world was shocked in an instant. While people were shocked, they also started heated discussions about it. In the end, this discussion even became more and more intense. As this heat continues to rise, it is inevitable that this incident will also have a huge 860 impact on the Stark Group. The day after things started to spread. After a day of fermentation, as soon as the stock market opened that morning, Stark Group's stock took a big dive, and the stock price plummeted. In just a few hours, the stock price has already fallen by about 20%, and this is just the beginning. It can be expected that if it continues to fall like this, the stock price may even fall within a day, can fall left and right. Such a drop means that the market value of Stark Group will instantly shrink by half in just one day, with the loss amounting to trillions. Such a loss can be described as crippling even for a world giant like Stark Group. So not surprisingly, after learning that the group had suffered such a loss, Obadiah still showed anger even though he had already expected it. Los Angeles, Stark Group Headquarters In a luxurious office, Obadiah stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling windows with a gloomy face and a cold light in his eyes. These losers can't even do such a small thing. I shouldn't have believed them in the first place. Just half a month ago, Obadiah, who had long been eyeing the Stark Group, approached an organization called the Ten Commandments and paid hundreds of millions in remuneration before finally reaching a cooperation with the other party. The content of the cooperation is also very simple, that is, Obadiah will use an excuse to let Tony go to Afghanistan, thereby creating an opportunity for them to kill Tony. As long as the news of Tony's death comes, the Stark family will no longer have the next generation of heirs. Under such circumstances, he will most likely have this giant with a market value of trillions in his hands. It has to be said that his plan was actually very feasible, but there was an accident in selecting teammates, which led to the final failure. The original plan went very smoothly, and Tony fell into the hands of the other party smoothly. However, what was different from the previous plan was that because the other party was interested in the power of the Jericho missile, they decided to temporarily keep Tony alive until he was ready. They'll start after they successfully create the missile. And it was precisely because of their decision that Tony was given the opportunity to escape. After seeing Tony return safe and sound, Obadiah cursed those pig teammates in his heart. But that's not the worst. Even if Tony can escape the crisis safely this time, he has not completely lost the opportunity. As long as he finds a good opportunity again in the future, Obadiah is confident that the Stark group will still belong to him in the end. 
But what annoyed Obadiah was that the first thing Tony did after returning was to announce that they would completely close their group's first profit point and withdraw from the huge amounts of cake that is the arms market. The consequences of such a decision can be described as devastating to the Stark group. You must know that the group originally started with arms. The arms business also accounts for most of the group's business transactions, and the business scale is a huge amount of trillions. Now with the closure of the weapons production department, it means that the group has most businesses will be paralyzed. If one is not handled well, the group will never recover. Such a result is absolutely unacceptable to Obadiah, who has long regarded the group as his own property. After all, this is a huge wealth involving trillions. Faced with such wealth that is so rich that no country can rival the country, I believe no one can he would be indifferent, and he was certainly no exception. He must be stopped. Thinking of this, Obadiah suppressed his anger and dialed Pepper's phone. After asking for Tony's location, he immediately set off and rushed downstairs. The group headquarters, an exhibition hall that is usually not open to the public, is where the first-generation arc reactor model built by Howard Stark, the founder of the Stark Group, is located. So far, this huge amount of reactor has been running for dozens of for many years. Yuanyuan has been constantly providing energy to various facilities in the group's headquarters. Although this reactor can produce constant energy, it is a pity that since Howard's death, no one has been able to replicate the same arc reactor again. Over time, the reactor project also came to an end. The door of the exhibition hall opened, and Obadiah quickly walked inside. He glanced at Tony's figure not far away, his eyes focused, and then he strode towards Tony's direction. Tony. When he came to Tony, he put on a helpless expression and said, Do you know how much our stock price fell today because of what you said yesterday? I don't know, 40 points? Tony didn't look back, still looking straight at the huge amounts of arc reactor in front of him. More than that, if the current trend continues, by the end of today, our stock price will fall to less than half, and this is only the first day's data. Obadiah said with a heavy face, Tony, you should understand that we are a weapons manufacturer. Without weapons production, how can we do business in the future? Uncle Stan, I don't want us to just leave a series of kill numbers in the future. This is our job. We make weapons. Our job is not to plunge the world into chaos. That's not what I saw. Tony shook his head, with a serious look on his face. We are not good enough. We can do better. We can do something else. Do something else? For example? Obadiah interrupted Tony and chuckled. Do you want us to make baby bottles? Tony did not speak, but first turned to look at the huge amounts of arc reactor beside him, and then said, I think we can restart the arc reactor project. 3.0 what did you say? Obadiah subconsciously sneered as if he heard something ridiculous. Come on, we all know that the arc reactor is just a gimmick. After Howard left, this thing it's of no use. Come on, Tony, the reason why we built this in the first place was just to shut up the mouths of those the customers. We didn't even think about it. It worked. Tony looked serious. I know, but this big guy has no profit value, right? So we should still. No, I mean. Tony looked directly at the other person. A confident smile slowly appeared on his face. Now the arc reactor has the possibility of making a profit. As soon as these words came out, Obadiah was stunned and looked at him with some disbelief on his face. When he saw Tony's determined expression, a hint of surprise flashed in his eyes. Chapter 267, Part 1 Tony, you know, the arc reactor is a dead end, right? Although he had a vague idea in his mind, Obadiah still did not ask directly, but quietly opened his mouth to test. Maybe. Looking at the unpredictable smile on Tony's face, Obadiah's heart was shaken, and there was a bit of anticipation in his eyes. How long has it been since we made a breakthrough in this area? Three years? Or longer? Seems like it. The smile on Tony's face widened even further. Looking at Tony's face, Obadiah finally confirmed his suspicion. His eyes instantly became hot, and thoughts were swirling in his heart. There is no doubt that if, as he thinks, Tony really masters the technology that can break through the existing arc reactor and can officially apply it in the energy field, then what changes will this technology bring to the energy field? Will be an earth-shaking change. Although he had never been optimistic about the arc reactor project before, he had to admit that just a huge amount of reactor in front of him could provide enough energy to run the entire building at full capacity for more than a hundred years. If this energy were used if used elsewhere, such as in automobiles and other fields, it can ensure that there will be no energy troubles throughout its life. Zero four, even if you want to apply it in these fields, the size of the reactor must be reduced a lot, but even so, the energy generated by the small reactor is thousands or tens of thousands of times that of the largest capacity battery on the market today. Once this achievement is added, putting it on the market will undoubtedly have a huge impact on the current energy field. Even if it is a conservative estimate, this technology can bring huge wealth of trillions to the group. Even this alone is enough to give Stark Group a new look and transform it into a member of the world's energy giants in a very short period of time. If they are given another period of time to develop, 
I am afraid that all the energy giants in the world combined will not be their opponents. After all, the technology in their hands is epic-making. With the performance of the arc reactor far surpassing other batteries, it will definitely it can easily occupy the global energy market. By then, it will not be surprising that the group's size will even be several times larger than it is now. Now the market value of the group is already over 1 trillion. If it continues to expand, it is not impossible to break through the level of 10 trillion. Thinking of such a scene, Obadiah suddenly felt a little excited. Let me see Tony. Looking at Tony with burning eyes, Obadiah could no longer hold back and spoke directly. Okay. Tony smiled confidently, without any precaution, and then slowly unbuttoned his shirt under the direct gaze of the other party, revealing the small reactor shining with azure light on his chest. Is this your new achievement? Looking at Tony's chest without blinking, Obadiah subconsciously showed a hint of greed in his eyes, but it was quickly covered up by him and quickly changed into an expression of wonder. Tony was very benefited by the sight and did not notice him at all. Previous anomaly. Definitely. Looking at his masterpiece on his chest, Tony's face was full of pride, and he looked at the other party with confidence. I succeeded. Now the arc reactor has the possibility of being used in other fields. As long as we have this, can it be are you still worried about the stock price? Okay. Okay, you're right. It with a smile on his face, Obadiah stretched out his hand to tie the buttons on Tony's chest, hiding the arc reactor on Tony's chest again, and then gently patted his shoulder and said, But listen, Tony, we're on the same team, okay? As long as we work together, there's nothing we can't do. Just like your father and I did back then. I know. Tony also looked at the other party seriously. I'm sorry that I announced that decision without discussing it with you. But if I tell you, you may not do it, Tony. Listen, don't do that kind of thing again, okay? You can leave these things to me. Obadiah interrupted him and said with a serious face, We are going to start playing another game now. We are going to be under a lot of pressure. So I want you to promise to keep a low profile. Do you understand? After looking at the other person for a long time, Tony finally shrugged helplessly. Okay, Uncle Stan, I'll do whatever you want. Hearing this, Obadiah's face returned to its original smile. Thinking of the results Tony had just shown him, he suddenly became extremely hot. After appeasing Obadiah's side, Tony finally felt free, returned home, and began to prepare for the next move. Because the time and conditions in the cave were very limited before, even if Tony successfully made a small reactor, the reactor did not reach the optimal value in his mind in terms of technology and capacity. So now he has started to remake it. One's thoughts. Fortunately, all the tools and materials are now available in his mansion. So after a few hours of work, Tony built a brand new small reactor. However, although the new reactor has been made, in order to successfully replace it, it is not enough for him to rely on himself. He must have another person to help him, just like he also relied on Ethan to succeed in the cave. Replace it. Without thinking too much, Tony immediately called Pepper over and asked her to help him change it. After arriving at Tony's mansion, Although she was surprised that such an object suddenly appeared on Tony's chest, Pepper quickly calmed down and quickly stepped forward to help. After a lot of work, under Tony's guidance, Pepper finally succeeded in replacing the new reactor. Looking at Tony who was finally safe and sound, Pepper couldn't help but secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Are you okay, Cho? Don't worry, you won't die yet. Tony collapsed on the ground and breathed out in a hurry. To be honest, replacing the reactor is not as easy as it seems because the reactor provides energy to firmly attract the remaining shrapnel in Tony's body and prevent it from flowing into his heart, allowing him to maintain life. 250, but once it is taken out and the energy supply of the reactor is lost, it means that the shrapnel in his body is no longer restrained. Once it flows into the heart along the blood, he is at risk of death at any time. So don't look at just only a few minutes past, but during this process, Tony and the two spent most of their energy, but it was all worth it. Now with the new reactor embedded in his chest, Tony's life was successfully saved. He only rested in place for a few minutes and regained his mobility again. After shaking his hands and feeling that nothing was abnormal, Tony nodded with satisfaction. Everything looks fine. Then what happens next? After regaining his mobility, Tony refused to stop at all and immediately entered into working mode. Looking at Tony's busy back, Pepper looked at the replaced old reactor in his hand and subconsciously asked, Tony, what should we do with this reactor? That one is no longer of use to me. Destroy it, came Tony's nonchalant voice. Do you want to destroy it? Pepper thought for a while, but finally did not do that. Instead, he took the decorative box on the side and put the reactor in. Looking at the sparkling reactor in the box, he nodded with satisfaction. Let's just keep it as a souvenir. It looks pretty good like this. After looking at his masterpiece for a moment, Pepper stopped disturbing Tony's work and quietly turned around and left. Chapter 268, Part 1 Inside the studio where Tony is. JRVS, are you there? His hands kept waving on the keyboard in front of him, 
and Tony spoke without raising his head. I'm here, giving birth. In the room, a sound of electronic synthesis came. I want to create a new project file, labeled Mark II. Looking at the design drawing on the screen in front of him, Tony's eyes flashed with an inexplicable light, and he said in a deep voice, I understand. Need to store the files into the Stark Industries central database. Hearing this, Tony's movements froze. He couldn't help but recall the scene he saw in the valley. He frowned slightly and shook his head. Actually, I don't know who I should believe now. So until I change my mind, keep everything on my private server. Working on a private project, sir? Tony stood up slowly and came to the workbench behind him. At this moment, a model that looks like a humanoid mecha is being projected on the stage. The user operates his hands on the projection in front of him. As he moves, the model in front of him also changes. I don't want this thing to fall into the wrong hands. After operating for a while, the model in front of him finally fixed its form. Looking at the projection in front of him, Tony's eyes suddenly became extremely serious. Maybe if this thing is in my hands, it can do some good things. This should be enough. Let's try it out. Time to get to work, JRVIS. Yes, sir. At the same time, near the valley where Tony had escaped, another group of heavily armed men came over at some unknown time. Looking at the base that had been buried by endless sand and dust, the leader did not dare to neglect it, and quickly asked people to start searching. I don't know how long I have been looking for it, but finally, along with a loud shout, the fragments of the Mark I armor that were originally buried underground after disintegration were gradually discovered. People looked at the huge mecha that was pieced together in front of them. From the appearance, the leader's face was solemn, and he signaled for others to take all the fragments with them, and then turned and left. Tony, who knew nothing about all of this, was still busy in the studio without eating or sleeping. Ever since he successfully built the first-generation Mark armor in the valley, Tony had always wanted to build it again when he came back, so he immediately started a new round of work without even taking a two-day break after he came back. After his redesign, Tony has full confidence in the second-generation Mark armor he is currently building. If his calculations are correct, then the performance of the new generation of armor he designed should be several times better than that of the first generation. If he puts it on, even an ordinary person can instantly wear it. Become an extraordinary being like Chin Luo. Thinking of the scene when Chin Luo took him flying in the sky, Tony felt a trace of longing in his heart, but this is not surprising. After all, flight is the dream of countless human beings, even Tony is no exception. When he watched when Chin Luo was able to fly freely in the sky, he was envious of him. Now that he also had the possibility of flight, how could Tony give up so easily? So without anyone else saying anything, he immediately spent all his time making his big toy. Seeing this armor being gradually perfected in his hands, Tony's desire became stronger and stronger. Driven by such motivation, Tony's work efficiency was also astonishingly fast. In the next two weeks, except for Obadiah's sudden visit midway, saying that it was because the group's stock price had plummeted, the board of directors wanted to stop his power as president. In order to convince the board of directors, Obadiah proposed the idea of asking Tony to hand over the careful reactor technology and let technicians analyze it, but Tony chose to refuse without hesitation. Now all his energy is focused on the big toy he is about to make. So after refusing and prevaricating the other party, and not caring about what Obadiah thinks, Tony returns to the studio again and continues to work on his own work. Okay, the 37th experiment on the 11th day, configuration 2.0, exclamation point. Because there is no better choice, Dumb is still responsible for putting out the fire. Having said this, Tony quickly turned his head and looked at a mechanical arm not far away from him, and said with a bad expression, But if you dare to spray me again, and I am not on fire, I will donate you to City College. Upon hearing this, the mechanical arm dropped to the ground in a humane manner, looking listless. Ignoring the artificial retard, Tony moved his limbs, his face more serious than ever. After thinking for a moment, he finally said slowly, Okay, let's start with 1% of the propulsion energy. 3 2 dash. The countdown reached zero, and at the next moment, for bright flames suddenly rose from the equipment worn at the end of Tony's limbs, and then a steady stream of propulsion force was generated. My body slowly lifted up to Ping Chon. After stabilizing for a while, Tony landed again. After the previous experiment and found nothing unusual, Tony became more courageous and started trying again. Just increased the propulsion energy to about 2.5% this time. Let's get started, Yang. This time, at the end of his four limbs, the flames he spat out suddenly became more turbulent, and the propulsion force became a little stronger, holding Tony's body steadily and suspended in the air, without any movement. No intention of falling off. Carefully control the limbs and change the direction of the limb thrusters to slowly start moving in midair. After getting familiar with the operation for a while, with Tony's powerful ability, he was soon able to freely control his body to turn in the air. After playing with it for a while, Johnny slowly landed on the ground. Very good. 
Recalling the operation just now, Tony nodded with satisfaction. A hint of excitement flashed across his face. I succeeded. I can fly now. Then the real flight experiment should be carried out next. Thinking of this, my asshole filled with a little more anticipation. Chapter 269, Part 1 After the preliminary test of flight performance, Tony felt that the performance had been debugged and immediately took the next step. The armor components that had been prepared long ago were transported to Tony by the robotic arm and then gradually fit onto his body. Click. Accompanied by the sound of metal friction, it didn't take long for all the parts to be assembled. What appeared in the room at this moment was a humanoid mechanical armor that was covered with silver-white metal armor and was about 1.9 meters tall. Even if it stood motionless, it felt like a heavy pressure. Tony's face was exposed at the head and neck area of the armor. He lowered his head and looked at his current appearance, nodded with satisfaction, and then reached out towards the workbench in front of him. He grabbed a steel mask on the stage in the palm of his hand, and then slowly pressed it towards his face. Click. Following his movements, the next moment, a sound of metal fitting was heard, and the steel mask just now was immediately firmly embedded in the armor, completely integrated with it. At the same time, inside the armor. The moment the mask was put on, bright lights flashed in front of Tony, and then, holographic projections suddenly appeared in front of him, displaying various parameters, which were all the data about the Mark I. In order to allow him, the driver, to grasp the current situation of the armor at any time. JRVIS, are you here? At any time, doctor. Inside the 293 armor, the voice of JRVIS suddenly sounded. After hearing this answer, Tony made up his mind and immediately said, Activate the front facing display. Activated. As soon as he finished speaking, through the two holes in front of his eyes, Tony could clearly see that the various objects displayed in the studio were all marked, with their various values clearly displayed on them for reference. Tony performs analysis and calculations. After turning his body and recording various information about the objects around him, his personal preferences were uploaded. Then, Tony continued to ask, Then can we perform virtual walking? Entering preferences, calibrating environment, check the control surfaces. As you wish. Then, the layer of metal armor wrapped around Tony's body suddenly changed. All parts of his limbs, back, waist, and abdomen slowly began to move, becoming extremely flexible. There didn't seem to be any sluggishness at all. After a while, after the inspection was completed, JRVISS voice sounded again. The test is completed. Prepare to shut down and start diagnosis. Hearing this, Tony's eyes flickered, and he felt a little anxious in his heart. He hurriedly said, let's check apocalypse and air traffic control first and monitor the ground control. As soon as these words came out, JRVIS immediately understood the intention of his master and quickly stopped him. Sir, before the actual flight, we still need to perform terabyte calculations. Our TRO. JRVIS. Tony interrupted before he finished speaking. Sometimes we need to run first before we can learn to walk. After saying this, Tony ignored JRVIS's warning and immediately gave the order. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1. Start the propulsion energy. Facing Tony's order, JRVIS had no way to resist. It could only follow Tony's order and activate the propulsion device. The next moment, the light from the reactor on the chest became a little brighter, and then, bright flames began to emerge from the ends of the armor's limbs, and a strong propulsion force acted on the ground, and then slowly lifted Tony's body into the air. Okay, let's go. Tony stopped hesitating, controlled his body to slowly become parallel, and then aimed at the exit in front. Raging flames spurted out, and then drove Tony to fly towards the exit quickly. With an extremely excited exclamation, Tony instantly rushed high into the sky, soaring wantonly over Los Angeles under the cover of night. In less than 10 minutes, with Superman's first-class ability, Tony successfully mastered flight ability. He could control his body freely, move and change directions in the air, and was extremely flexible. After getting familiar with the basic operations, Tony then turned his gaze to the night-shrouded sky, excitement flashing in his eyes. Okay, let me see how capable this thing is. What is the record of the State Route 71 reconnaissance aircraft? The fixed-wing flight altitude record is 85,000 feet, about 26,000 kilometers. Records are meant to be broken, so give it a try. Hearing this, Tony's face became even more excited, a feb. His body slowly stood upright, pointed at the sky above, and pushed forward at full speed. Bright flames erupted outward instantly, and under the action of huge amounts of propulsion, Tony quickly flew towards the sky and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Sir, there is potentially fatal ice on the armor. After flying to an altitude of 10,000 meters, suddenly, the voice of JRVIS came. Continue. Tony ignored it. His eyes were full of excitement, and he continued to fly upwards without any intention of stopping. 12,000 meters, 14,000 meters, 
17,000 meters, 20,000 meters. As the height increased, gradually, even Tony didn't notice that a layer of fine ice crystals had quietly condensed on the surface of the armor that wrapped his body, then gradually covered the whole ear. At the same time, the temperature in the sky was also dropping rapidly. After the condensed ice crystals completely covered the armor, the flames that were originally spewing out at the limbs of the armor gradually extinguished. Finally, a few bright or dark lights flashed, and then quickly fell silent. Not good. Feeling the sudden disappearance of the propulsion force maintaining flight outside his body, Tony's expression changed, and he immediately recovered from his previous excitement, as if he realized something, a flash of light flashed in his eyes. I wanted to do something, but unfortunately it was too late now. After losing the propulsion, the armor also lost the possibility of maintaining the flight posture. The light in the eyes gradually went out, and then it unconsciously fluttered in the air a few times, and finally moved towards the ground below falls. If he fell rapidly at this speed, it would probably take less than half a minute. When the armor just touched the ground, even with the protection of the armor, he had no confidence that he could survive in this situation. We're icing, JRVIS, extend flaps. Tony panicked and wanted to save himself, but no matter how much he called JRVIS's name, JRVIS was unable to contact Tony at such a low temperature due to the previous freezing effect, so JRVIS was helpless in response to Tony's request for help. Quick, we have to get rid of the ice quickly. After seeing no movement, Tony was obviously a little more panicked, but it must be said that his psychological quality was also very strong. After realizing that JRVIS was unable to provide help, Tony immediately took action himself and groped on the surface of the armor for a while, and then successfully found the water removal button. After gently twisting the button, the armor suddenly shook, and a large number of condensed ice crystals were instantly dispersed and fell off Tony's body. Without the restraints of these ice crystals, the eyes that had been extinguished on the display shelf suddenly lit up, the holographic projection in the mask reappeared, and various functions that had originally stopped running gradually resumed operation. So, at the critical moment when Tony was about to fall, the power system on the armor finally started, flames spurted out from the limbs again, and the strong propulsion force sounded. Under Tony's efforts, the battle finally came to a halt. Half empty. Oh, when the crisis was over, Tony shouted excitedly and continued to fly in a circle over the city before heading towards the base. Chapter 270, Part 1 It seems that the problem of armor easily freezing in high-altitude environments still needs to be solved. After returning to the studio and taking off his armor, Tony walked forward while thinking about the problem. Just when passing by the workbench nearby, Tony suddenly stopped. What's this? Looking at the items wrapped in oil paper that had been placed on the stage at some point, Tony's eyes flashed with curiosity, and he stepped forward and slowly opened it. This is. After opening the package and looking at the decorative box containing the first-generation reactor, Tony reacted instantly and shook his head with a smile. A beautiful figure could not help but appear in his mind, and his heart was filled with warmth. Placing it solemnly in a small secret compartment in the studio, Tony kept moving and threw himself into work again. For the record, the main sensor gradually becomes sluggish above 40,000 feet, case pressurization is an issue, and I think icing will be a significant factor. Be observant, doctor. Perhaps, if you plan to visit other planets, we should improve the exhaust system. You can consider it. Tony nodded, and his brain quickly started simulating, connect with Cisco, reconfigure the shell metal, and use the gold-titanium alloy of the six-wing Angel tactical satellite. With the properties of this alloy, it should be able to ensure that the shell will not be damaged so as not to affect the power-to-weight ratio, understand? Yes. JRVIS replied, then asked, Do I need to render as proposed? Perform your best. Afterwards, Tony watched the news on TV while waiting for the rendering results of JRVIS. After a while, the voice of JRVIS came. Sir, it's ready. Hearing this, Tony's eyes were immediately drawn back to the screen. However, when he saw the rendering results of JRVIS on the screen, Tony frowned subconsciously. JRVIS. Isn't this color a bit too ostentatious? Obviously, Tony was a little dissatisfied with JRVIS, turning his armor into a golden color. According to analysis, this color is more in line with your low-key personality. Rolling his eyes, Tony glanced at the black and red antique car in front of him. Looking at the body of this classic car, Tony's eyes suddenly lit up. An idea suddenly came to mind. Let's try adding ignition red to the armor first. It does look a lot more low-key this way. Not long after, the rendering was completed again. What appeared in front of Tony at this moment was a body of red and gold. Except for the head and limbs, which were rendered gold, most of the rest were wrapped in red, which looked very attractive. I like this color, let's paint it. Tony nodded with satisfaction and ordered. Start automatic assembly. Estimated completion time, 5 hours. Are there 5 hours left? 
Tony couldn't help but look at the TV screen in front of him. Looking at the content broadcast on the screen, Tony's heart moved, and he suddenly had an idea. Then work hard. I'll go out first. In front of a huge and luxurious hotel in Los Angeles, with the roar of an engine and countless screams from the audience, Tony slowly walked out of the car. Looking at the lively scene in front of him, Tony glanced at it, determined the direction, and then walked forward quickly. Weapons manufacturing is only a small part of Stark Industries, and our work with the fire rescue community. In the crowd, Obadiah, who was talking to reporters, heard the screams from the crowd. A trace of doubt flashed in his eyes. He subconsciously turned his head and looked to one side. However, when he saw clearly who was coming, his expression suddenly froze, the gloomy look in his eyes flashed away, and then he quickly regained his composure. Hey Tony, why are you here? He showed a very natural smile, opened his hands, hugged Tony who came to him, and said hello. I don't even know what's going on in the world. I came to my own party without an invitation. If he hadn't happened to see the content of this party on TV, Tony might have been kept in the dark. Hearing this, Obadiah smiled and said, Look at you, what a surprise. I thought you had other things to do. Zero, please give me flowers. After a few simple explanations, fortunately Tony didn't care much about it, so he quickly put it behind him. Business first, we'll see you inside. After saying that, Tony planned to head towards the party door. Just after he had taken a few steps, Obadiah suddenly remembered something and quickly reached out his hand to stop him. He whispered, Hey, take it easy and do unnecessary things. It took a lot of effort for me to do it. The board is appeased. Don't worry. I'm just here to have fun. I won't cause any trouble. Giving the other party a reassuring look, Tony quickly turned around and left. Arriving at the party, Tony had just ordered a glass of wine. While he was standing there looking for something, Phil Coulson, who had been waiting for a long time, immediately seized the opportunity and immediately stepped forward to talk. Mr. Stark. Being attracted by this voice, Tony looked over subconsciously. When he saw the person coming, a flash of understanding flashed in his eyes. Oh, you are the agent of that, or so-and-so bureau. Phil Coulson agent. Affiliated with the Strategic Homeland Defense Offensive and Logistics Support Agency. Gee, I think you need to come up with a new name. Many people say that. Phil Coulson responded with a smile. Mr. Stark, I know it must be difficult for you now. While Phil Coulson was persuading, Tony's eyes had already been attracted by a beautiful figure in the crowd in front of him. His eyes were fixed on the front, and he didn't hear what Phil Coulson said at all. He just subconsciously nodded in agreement. Let's make an appointment to talk. How about meeting at Stoke Industrial at 7 p.m. on the 24th? Okay, it's settled. Tony pointed forward. Then I'll go find my assistant now and ask her to help make a plan. After saying this, without waiting for Phil Coulson's reaction, he immediately stepped forward and walked in the direction of Pepper ahead. Watching Tony's disappearing figure, Phil Coulson wanted to speak several times, but finally gave up. He shook his head helplessly, turned around and left the scene without saying anything. Chapter 271, Part 1 Hey Pepper! Quickly walking through the crowd and coming to Pepper's side, Tony adjusted his clothes subconsciously, then pretended to be surprised by the encounter and said, What a coincidence that I met you here. Hearing this familiar voice, Pepper was stunned for a moment and turned her head. When she saw Tony behind her, joy flashed in her eyes, Boss, why are you here? Come and take a look. Tony shrugged and said with a relaxed look. As he spoke, Tony's eyes couldn't help but glance around the other person, with a trace of wonder in his eyes, and he said sincerely, You look so beautiful today. This dress looks great. Really? A smile appeared on Pepper's face. This is my birthday present today. Speaking of this, Pepper paused, looked at Tony in front of her, and said softly, You gave it to me. Oh, then my taste is really right. A light flashed in Tony's eyes, and he immediately recalled it. Pepper had told him about her birthday before he left, but at that time he was busy selling Jericho missiles, so he couldn't choose a gift for her. In the end, he simply let Pepper choose by herself. Just let him pay the bill. Now it seems that the result is not bad. So, want to dance? Looking at the gorgeous Pepper in front of him, Tony extended his right hand and invited. No, I think. Pepper still wanted to refuse, but Tony would not give her a chance to refuse. He held her wrist slightly forcefully and then led Pepper to the center of the dance floor. Feeling the warmth from Tony's palm, Pepper's face turned red. Her words of rejection were all forgotten and she was pulled to the dance floor. After the dance, the two looked at each other and an inexplicable emotion flowed through their hearts. But unfortunately, just when Tony was about to make the next move, Pepper suddenly excused herself from his arms and left the venue quickly, using the excuse that she had something to do. Watching the other person's disappearing back, Tony did not pursue him directly. He stood there with a smile on his face, feeling extremely confident in his heart. In a good mood, 
Tony immediately decided to celebrate with a glass of wine. A glass of bourbon, thank you. While Tony was waiting in front of the bar, a hot and pretty beauty came to him and looked directly at him. Tony Stark, I really didn't expect to see you here. Hearing this, Tony turned around subconsciously, looked at the other person, frowned slightly, and asked doubtfully, Who are you? Although he does feel that the other person looks familiar, as a playboy, Tony doesn't know how many such beauties he has had brief and beautiful relationships with, so he can be forgiven for not remembering it for a moment. Kelly, after thinking for a while, and I then said with some hesitation, Christine. Oh, yes, Christine. I remembered it. Tony suddenly realized it and pretended to remember it. Watching his performance, Kristen knew it already, but she didn't expose his intentions, but quickly changed the topic. To be honest, I didn't expect you to dare to come here tonight. Can you tell me your response? Response. Tony looked at the other person, thinking he understood the other person's thoughts, and squeezed out a trace of apology on his face. Listen, Christine, I'm very sympathetic to what happened between us. Before he could finish speaking, Christine interrupted with an impatient expression. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the relationship between your company and a recent tragedy. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I think you should interview those terrorists about this. I'm just a victim. Tony thought the other party wanted to ask him about the days when he was kidnapped, so he shrugged helplessly and replied with a smile. Are you kidding me? Christine's mouth curved with difficulty, her eyes full of anger. Or is this what you said at the reception to take responsibility? With that said, Christine took out a few pictures from the small bag she carried with her and handed them over, saying coldly, This place is called Kumala, have you heard of it? Hearing the name, Tony's heart skipped a beat, and he lowered his head to look at the photo in his hand. However, when he saw the content of the photo in his hand, Tony's expression changed instantly and he frowned. The photo shows a village that looks extremely dilapidated, surrounded by ruins. From time to time, the bodies of people or animals are dumped on the roadside. On the side are weapons and missiles unique to the Stark group. Especially one of the pictures, as Tony the fruit of hard work, the Jericho missile is also on the list flipping through the photos in his hand. Tony looked ugly and said in a deep voice, When was this taken? Yesterday. Hearing this answer, Tony's face suddenly became a little more ugly, and he shook his head hard. I didn't give permission for transportation, but your company allowed it. My company cannot represent me. After Tony dropped these words, he no longer paid attention to the other party's reaction, took the photo in his hand, turned around and left the venue quickly. When he came outside the venue, he found Obadiah who was being interviewed. Tony handed over the photo in his hand and asked with an ugly face, Do you know what's going on? What happened to Kumila? Seeing this, Obadiah first took Tony away from the crowd and came to a corner, and then said with a serious face, Tony, you can't be so naive. This matter is not as simple as you think. Really? Then tell me, what's not simple about this? Tony suppressed the anger in his eyes and suppressed his anger. I have already said that the weapons production department will be closed in the future, so what is the situation now? You want me to break my own promise, right? Staring straight at Tony, after a while, Obadiah showed a smile on his face, patted his shoulder, and turned his head. Come on, Tony, let's take a picture first. The two of them faced the camera, taking pictures on one side, and on the other side, Obadiah's voice sounded in Tony's ears at the same time. Tony, who do you think excluded you? I filed the restraining order against you. Speaking of this, Obadiah's eyes flashed with a cold light, and his face was still full of smile. Only in this way can I protect you better. So don't blame me for doing this. Everything I do is for the good of the company. After saying this, regardless of Tony, who was already standing stiffly on the spot with a look of disbelief on his face, Obadiah strode forward and left amid the crowd. Tony stood there with an ugly expression on his face. He lowered his head and thought for a moment. Then he didn't stop either. He quickly walked to the car door and hurried towards home. Chapter 272, Part 1 This is 15 miles away from Kumala. The situation here can only be described as a road to hell. Countless people have been displaced and died under gunfire. In the large living room, Tony sat on the sofa in the living room, looking at the content displayed on the TV screen in front of him. His hands kept moving, silently trimming the red armor on his arms, and his eyes gradually became firm. Peter's home in Queens, New York. Two weeks have passed since he returned from Afghanistan. Today, after sending Peter and May out as usual, Chen Luo dressed up as usual and planned to go to the college again. Just when he was about to set off, a report on TV suddenly attracted his attention. According to reports, just a few hours ago, a steel robot suddenly appeared in the town of Kumala. After showing powerful firepower, the militants were defeated by the robot and the residents of the town were successfully rescued. Now the picture about the steel robot. Um? Subconsciously turning his head, Chen Luo was stunned for a moment when he saw the very familiar figure in the picture, and then a smile slowly appeared on his face. 
sighing softly. Finally, Iron Man appears. 08. Go back a few hours. After repairing the equipment, Tony, who had already made his decision, stopped hesitating and immediately came to the studio. Under the operation of several robotic arms, the gold and red steel battlesuit began to be put on. Finally, when he was finished wearing it, the Iron Man, who was about 1.9 meters tall, covered in golden red, with clear and smooth lines, and a unique metallic beauty, appeared in front of the world. Iron Man, officially born. Looking around at his body, Tony's heart skipped a beat. The reactor on his chest quickly provided energy for the steel battlesuit. With the constant energy blessing, for powerful shockwaves were emitted from the ends of the battlesuit's limbs, driving Tony along. The body slowly lifted off the ground. Boom. Under the influence of powerful propulsion, Tony quickly flew out of the exit and rushed into the sky. With the assistance of JRVIS, after simply identifying the direction, bright flames burst out, and the sky where Tony was standing instantly erupted into a circle of white air waves. The next moment, Tony's figure disappeared in an instant. The reactor on the chest began to operate at full speed. With the support of powerful energy, the speed of this steel battle suit reached about Mach 2. At such a powerful speed, a long air wave instantly appeared in the sky, and a terrifying sound barrier exploded. The shattering sound spread to all directions, and the sound was extremely shocking. Under Tony's full speed, it took less than 30 minutes for Tony to cross thousands of miles and successfully appear above the small town of Kumala. Looking down, when Tony saw what was happening in the town at this moment, his face suddenly became very ugly, and his eyes were burning with anger. At this moment, on the ground below, a group of well-equipped militants were searching the surrounding houses from house to house. After a while, the residents of the houses were driven out one after another. They were then loaded into a vehicle parked in front, seemingly transporting these people to a certain place. Definitely, there were some people who resisted, but facing the heavily armed group of militants, they had no room for resistance at all. When they saw someone showing signs of disobedience, they immediately pulled the trigger without hesitation. Not good. Seeing this scene, Tony's pupils shrank instantly, and without thinking, he immediately controlled the armor to land on the ground. Boom. At the critical moment when the opponent pulled the trigger, Tony fell from the sky and was instantly in front of the opponent. At the same time, gunshots rang out instantly, bullets shot out, and immediately landed on the steel battle suit in front of them. What a coincidence. The bullet turned back and landed on the opponent. After receiving this heavy blow, the opponent froze, his eyes instantly lost their luster, and he immediately fell to the ground. Tony kept moving, and his hands suddenly lit up, aiming at the other people beside him who were still looking confused, and instantly launched an attack. The powerful shockwave burst out and landed on them before the opponent could react. After receiving this heavy blow, the opponent instantly flew backwards for several meters, fell to the ground, and made no sound anymore. Before they could take precautions, Tony knocked down several people in an instant. He watched his companions fall down one by one. Only then did the others react, shouting in horror and shouting words with unknown meanings. Subconsciously raised the weapon in his hand, pointed it at Tony's figure without hesitation, and then pulled the trigger. Bang, bang, bang. Bright flames emerged from the muzzle of the gun, and countless bullets poured out towards Tony in an instant. However, to Tony now, their attack was no different from scratching an itch, except that it left traces of metal on the steel battle suit. The scratched marks will have no other impact. Completely ignoring the opponent's scraping-like attack, Tony kept waving his hands, and the powerful shockwave sounded again. Under Tony's attack, the opponent did not react at all, and was instantly knocked to the ground. Seeing this scene, the remaining people were immediately frightened, and their eyes were full of panic. Now that the weapons in their hands were ineffective against this steel monster, and watching their companions fall one by one, their hearts were filled with fear. Just when they were at a loss, someone finally turned their attention to the people who were arrested next to them. Looking at these people, some people seemed to have grasped a life-saving straw and hurriedly pointed their weapons at these people. Looking at Tony with eyes full of threats, seeing the movements of this group of people, Tony's movements froze. He did not choose to continue taking action, but slowly lowered his hands, as if he had given up resistance. Seeing this, everyone who was originally nervous suddenly breathed a sigh of relief. However, just as they relaxed a little, Tony made another move. The armor parts on the shoulders suddenly rose up, revealing the dense bullet holes in them. Then, dozens of bullets were fired instantly, hitting their bodies immediately before they could react. Under the precise calculation of JRVIS, the bullets did not deflect at all and 987 all hit the bid. After dealing with these people, Tony grabbed the leader who was hiding behind the wall and threw it on the ground. He left behind a sentence, I'll leave him to you, then turned around and soared into the sky, disappearing from everyone's sight in an instant. Looking at the increasingly smaller town below, Tony's eyes flashed with joy, and he felt relieved. 
In the process of dealing with the militants just now, among the people who were kidnapped by the other party, Tony also saw a figure that was very familiar to him. It was Ethan who had been separated from him shortly after. Judging from the other party's appearance, the two people beside him should be his wife and child. If he hadn't arrived in time this time, the fate of their family of three would have been unknown. After successfully rescuing these people, Tony didn't waste any time and immediately set off to return to the original route. However, what he didn't notice when he left was that everything he had just done was captured by a hidden camera in the town. So there was no surprise later. In less than half a day, this video immediately started to spread all over the internet, and it was at this time that Chin Luo got the news. Looking at the scene in the video, Chin Luo was feeling a little emotional when the next moment, the phone rang at the beginning of the day. Which one? Chun, did you see it? That video on TV. On the other side of the phone, Ni's slightly excited voice came. Chapter 273, Part 1. Tony, it's you. Chin Luo raised his eyebrows, a smile slowly appeared on his face, and asked with interest, What did you just say? The Tin Man on TV? What, do you know something? SH asterisk T. Don't call him Tin Man, that name is too ugly. Tony complained on the other end of the phone. Listen, Chin, I just thought of a good name. Iron Man, how does this name sound? Does it make sense? It took me more than two hours to think of this. I think this name is good and suits me very well. I will use this name from now on. Listening to Tony's chattering voice, Chin Luo had no choice but to interrupt. Wait, Tony, so you mean the Iron Man on TV? Iron Man is you, right? That's definitely, Tony said with a proud look on his face. Besides me, who else do you think has the ability to build such a set of steel armor? That's true. Chen Luo agreed with a smile. Except for you. No one wants to dye the armor into that color. What do you know, that round shape? The two chatted for a while, then Chen Luo looked up at the time and said helplessly, Hey Tony, do you have anything else to do? I have to go out on a date, but I don't have time to listen to you bragging about your armor. It's actually not a big deal. Hearing this, Tony stopped boasting, remained silent for a moment, and then said in a deep voice, Chun. I need your help with something here. It's about Obadiah. He recently. He told Chen Luo the other party's actions in recent days, as well as what the other party said to him last night. After saying this, Tony's tone unconsciously became more serious. So I hope you can help me investigate. Obadiah, I want to know what actions he has taken during this period. Now that Tony has been issued a restraining order by the board of directors, he doesn't say whether he can receive the news from the company. Even if he wants to return to the company, he needs permission. So naturally, he cannot use the company's power to pursue it. But fortunately, he still has Chen Luo as a good friend. With the power of Chen Luo, Tony believes that he will get the results in a short time. Obadiah. After hearing what Tony said, Chen Luo's eyes flashed, and he suddenly understood. It looks like it's about to start. Chen Luo, who knew the original plot, naturally knew that Obadiah was the mastermind behind Tony's kidnapping. If he hadn't provided corresponding intelligence to the Ten Commandments organization, I'm afraid the other party wouldn't have been able to succeed so easily. In addition to this incident, Chen Luo also knew that it would not be long before the other party would come to Tony's home and forcibly snatch Tony's arc reactor. If there was not a spare reactor at home, Tony would have been killed by then. Go see God. Now that he remembered this, Chen Luo would not just watch Tony fall into danger. So after thinking for a moment, Chen Luo spoke again. I understand. I will arrange for someone to investigate. But according to what you said, there may be something wrong with Obadiah. I think it's better for you to be careful. I think you'd better not let him go to your home during this period. If he really has other ideas, then you will be in danger. Don't worry, I'll be fine. On the other side of the phone, Tony curled his lips in disapproval and didn't take Chin Luo's words to heart at all. In his opinion, what Chin Luo just said was a bit alarmist. Although he also admitted that he and Obadiah had some conflicts now, they were all issues related to the company's development. If because of this, he thought that Uncle Stan, who had watched him grow up, would hurt him, Tony was the first to not believe it. What he is thinking now is to ask Chin Luo to help investigate the other party's recent actions, and then find loopholes in it, which can help him regain control of the company. As for Obadiah, Tony believes that as long as he can regain his power, the other party will no longer be able to do any small tricks behind his back. Hearing Tony's tone, Chin Luo instantly understood that the other party didn't take his words to heart at all, and shook his head helplessly. Chin Luo, who knew this guy's character very well, naturally knew that it would be extremely difficult for him to believe his words without any concrete evidence. So Chen Luo did not persuade further, but took a step back and said, Okay, but remember, if anything happens in the future, don't forget to call me. I know, I know. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'll hang up first. After hanging up the phone and recalling Chen Luo's warning just now, Tony smiled and shook his head. This guy is really more verbose than my dad. Tony, who didn't think he would be in any danger, was about to go back to work, but the moment he turned around, Tony paused, thought for a while, and finally spoke. 
J-R-V-I-S. I'm here, sir. Help me put Chin's phone number in the emergency contact list. Yes, sir. After doing all this, Tony's eyes flashed and he murmured, The next step is to see what news Pepper and Chun can find. Hopefully find some useful information. Before asking Chin Luo for help, Tony had already asked Pepper to go to the company to check some information. It has been a while now, and if everything goes well, he should be back soon. Hope everything goes well. Tony sighed softly, and then just when Tony was about to turn around and head to the studio to continue improving his armor, suddenly, a doorbell rang outside the door. Huh? Are you back so soon? Hearing this voice, Tony's eyes lit up, his steps paused, and then he turned and walked towards the door. On the other side, hearing the busy signal from the other end of the phone, Chin Luo shook his head, his face full of helplessness. This guy is as confident as ever. It seems Tony is determined to suffer this loss. That's fine. I just take this opportunity to help this guy, Wang Hao, improve his memory. Although he intends to teach Tony a lesson, Chin Luo will not just watch it. Now that Tony's steel armor has been developed, it is not far away that Obadiah will take action. In order to ensure Tony's safety, Chin Luo planned to leave for Los Angeles immediately after his date with Qin, believing that with him taking care of him, Tuwa Kang's life safety could also be guaranteed. Chin Luo made a decision in his mind and was about to go out. However, just as he got into the car, a rapid ringing of the phone rang. Picking up the phone and taking a look, Chin Luo was stunned when he saw the name displayed on it. Tony, what's going on with you? Chin Luo asked curiously after answering the phone. Sean, help, help. Tony's broken voice sounded from the other end of the phone. Um? Hearing this voice, Chin Luo blinked subconsciously and was still a little unresponsive. Chapter 274, Part 1 Wait, did Obadiah just come to see you? After being stunned for a long time, Chin Luo suddenly seemed to remember something and asked with a strange expression. There was silence for a moment, rapid breathing, and then Tony's weak voice came again. Don't talk so much yet, come to my house quickly, otherwise it will be too late. Well, after hearing this, Chin Luo immediately confirmed what he was thinking and couldn't help but feel a little funny. He really didn't expect that he had just reminded the other party, but the next moment it became a reality. Tony used to look nonchalant before, but the retribution came so quickly, and his strength explained to him what a precise slap in the face means. However, Tony was indeed in danger now, so Chin Luo had no intention of making fun of him. After asking the other party to wait where he was, Chin Luo hung up the phone and started taking action immediately. With a thought, teleportation ability is activated again. Using the ability to teleport in a hurry, Chin Luo arrived at his destination in just a few minutes. Arriving at the living room, Chin Luo swept his eyes and instantly spotted Tony who was slumped on the ground with a pale face. Seeing the other party's appearance at this moment, Chin Luo was heartbroken and quickly came to the other party's side. Tony, how are you? Hearing Chin Luo's voice, Tony perked up, stretched out his hand and pointed to the cupboard not far away, and heard a faint voice. There's a spare reactor there, I'll bring it over. Chin Luo nodded, waved his hand and purple-red energy appeared instantly. He opened the cabinet in the air. Chin Luo saw the packaging box containing the reactor at a glance. He stretched out his hand gently, and the reactor flew out instantly and came to Chin Luo. In hand. Afterwards, under Tony's instructions, Chun Luo accurately installed the small reactor on his chest. The moment the reactor was successfully embedded, a blue light suddenly lit up from his chest. As the reactor was activated again, the shrapnel that had been rushing towards Tony's heart was absorbed by the reactor again, and Tony was finally out of danger. After the reactor was activated, Tony's originally livid face gradually became rosy, and his rapid breathing gradually became calmer. Feeling that his body had regained its vitality, BCBG, Tony finally breathed a long sigh of relief, his face full of joy. Finally alive. What? Tell me what's going on now. Seeing that Tony was finally out of danger, Chin Luo asked with a smile. Don't mention it. Tony's face darkened, as if he was remembering something, and anger rose in his heart. Damn it, I never thought that when I was kidnapped, it would be his hand. Recalling what the other party had admitted to him not long ago, Tony's heart was filled with anger and at the same time, he was also filled with deep sorrow. After all, after his parents died in an accident, he regarded them as his only relatives. Now being stabbed in the back by his own relatives, one can imagine how painful and depressed Tony felt. But his depression only lasted for a while. Suddenly, as if he thought of something, his face suddenly changed and he subconsciously said, No, Pepper is in danger. He has not forgotten that he asked Pepper to go to Obadiah's office to steal confidential documents, and when the other party came here to snatch his reactor, it was obvious that the other party had also discovered Pepper's little tricks in order to prevent his secrets from being leaked. Obadiah will never let Pepper go. Thinking of this, Tony felt extremely anxious, turned his head, looked at Chun Luo seriously and said, Chun, I still need your help with something? 
Do you want me to help you keep Pepper safe? Before he could speak, Chin Luo understood what Tony meant without any hesitation and immediately nodded in agreement. Leave it to me, Pepper will be fine. Speaking of this, Chin Luo's eyes flashed and he said with great interest, but if you want to protect Pepper's safety, the best solution is to deal with Obadiah. What do you think? You need my help to deal with this trouble? Leave this to me. Tony shook his head and said with firm eyes, it's time for me to come to an end with him. Is that so? Chun Luo smiled, patted his good friend on the shoulder, and his expression gradually became serious. Then it's up to you, Iron Man, at the same time. On the other side, after leaving with the files copied from Obadiah's office computer, Pepper happened to run into Phil Coulson who came to see him at this time. When he saw Pepper going downstairs, Phil Coulson stood up immediately. Miss Potts, we made an appointment. Have you forgotten our agreement? Definitely not. Seeing Phil Coulson and thinking of the other person's identity, Pepper's eyes suddenly flashed with hope, and he quickly said, We can talk now. Come with me. Now? Yes, come with me now. Seeing Pepper's hurried look, Phil Coulson stood up in confusion and followed him. On the way, after leaving the Stark building, before he could speak, Pepper couldn't hold himself back and immediately asked Phil Coulson for help. When Phil Coulson heard from Pepper what Obadiah had done, he was shocked. Without hesitation, he immediately began to mobilize his agents, planning to arrest the other party together. According to the information in the documents in Pepper's hand, Obadiah has a secret laboratory under the exhibition hall where the large arc reactor is stored. Some confidential research is currently being conducted there. In order to ensure that no accidents occur, Phil Coulson decided to find this place first. Laboratory, take away or destroy all the research materials in it, so as not to leave the other party with a chance to make a comeback. However, even though his movements were fast enough, Obadiah, who could not hold back at this moment, happened to be in the laboratory. After successfully snatching Tony's reactor, he couldn't wait to come here, walked up to him and said, he looks extremely tall and thick. In front of the steel armor, his face was full of expectation. Slowly put the reactor in your hand into the chest of the armor in front of you. Click. As the reactor was integrated into the armor, and with a constant supply of energy from the reactor, the eyes on the armor's head lit up instantly, and it looked like it was coming to life. Even if it was just looked at from a distance, it was all. People are under heavy pressure. Success. Looking at the scene in front of him, Obadiah looked ecstatic and was about to say something. The next moment, an explosion suddenly came from the door of the laboratory. Hearing this voice, his expression changed instantly, as if he realized something. A trace of ferocity flashed in his eyes, and he looked at the armor in front of him, without hesitation, and immediately started to move. As for what happened here, Phil Coulson and his party outside the door knew nothing about it. Chapter 275, Part 1 After using a bomb to blow open the door, Phil Coulson signaled Pepper to wait outside, and then he led the others and walked cautiously behind the door. It was pitch black behind the door, and you couldn't see your fingers. The boundless darkness enveloped everyone, as if it was going to swallow everyone up. In such an environment, not only whether they can find traces of Obadiah, but also whether they can walk normally is a problem. Without saying anything else, the leader, Phil Coulson, silently turned on the flashlight, held a gun in one hand, and led the others forward cautiously. After passing through the darkness in front of them, finally, when the group came to the laboratory hall, although there was still no light here, there were streaks of moonlight shining above the laboratory, making the surrounding environment fall into the eyes of Phil Coulson and others. His eyes glanced around the room. Suddenly, Phil Coulson's eyes froze, and he looked somewhere. Less than a few meters behind him, with a height of about two and a half meters, a humanoid armor covered with thick steel suddenly appeared in front of him. Even if it is just standing here quietly now, it can give people a heavy feeling. The sense of oppression. Looking at the humanoid armor in front of him, Phil Coulson suddenly became wary and moved slowly towards the armor. Arriving in front of the armor, Phil Coulson looked up and down, his eyes full of solemnity. Although he knew that there were secrets in this laboratory through the hard drive provided by Pepper, he was still a little surprised when he saw the armor. He never expected that the other party would have such a trump card. Just looking at the armor in front of me, its outer layer is covered with thick steel, which is enough to provide it with extremely powerful defense. Let alone whether the missile can penetrate the defense of the armor in front of me, based on their judging from the weapons in hand now, if faced with such a defense, it would probably be difficult to cause damage to it. If the big guy in front of them can move, with their current manpower configuration, Phil Coulson has no confidence that he can compete with him. Phil Coulson also became somewhat interested in the big guy in front of him. If he could bring it back to the base and hand it over to the headquarters researchers for research, he might also make other discoveries. Thinking of this, Phil Coulson immediately decided to contact headquarters and send someone to transport the armor in front of him back. However, just when he was about to make a move, the next moment, a dazzling light suddenly lit up from the chest of the armor. Then under his shocked gaze, 
the armor seemed to have life and slowly revived. Click! There were bursts of metal friction sounds, and the huge metal arm slowly lifted up, condensed into a fist mark, and then aimed in the direction of Phil Coulson, slamming down hard. Not good. Seeing the other party's movements, Phil Coulson felt a warning sign in his heart. Without thinking, he immediately turned around and rushed in the direction he came from. Quick retreat. Boom. As soon as he finished speaking, a dull loud noise came. After Phil Coulson dodged the attack of the big guy in front of him, the others clearly saw that the opponent's punch hit the steel floor under his feet, and a large hole was instantly opened in the ground by the opponent's punch, with broken iron sheets surrounding it. It's surging upwards, making people's hearts skip a beat. After realizing the lethality of the ferocious steel giant in front of them, everyone immediately turned around and ran in the direction they came from without any hesitation. Definitely, as well-trained agents, they don't just run away. While retreating, they don't forget to turn around and shoot, hoping to delay time. But unfortunately, their attacks were like scratching an itch for Obadiah, who was now wearing a steel armor. Countless bullets fell on the heavy armor, leaving streaks of metal scratches on the surface of the armor. Apart from the traces of rubbing, it will no longer have any impact, let alone hurt him. Completely ignoring the opponent's scraping attack, Obadiah laughed ferociously and controlled the armor he named Iron Overlord to chase everyone. Perhaps in pursuit of stronger strength and defense, this Iron Overlord is correspondingly weaker in speed and flexibility. This also gave Phil Coulson and others the opportunity to successfully escape. Relying on their agility and surroundings due to the constraints of the environment, they finally escaped successfully before Iron Overlord caught up with them. How's it going? What happened inside? Seeing Phil Coulson and others looking in such a mess, Pepper asked in a panic. But at this moment, Phil Coulson had no intention of saying anything to her, so he quickly pulled her and ran out of the exhibition hall. Don't try to escape. Before Pepper could react, the next moment, Obadiah's roar sounded. Click. Two huge ferocious steel arms suddenly extended from the door. They grasped both sides of the door in front of them with their palms and tried to tear them apart, accompanied by a harsh sound of metal friction under the shocked gaze of everyone, that the door made of steel was suddenly torn into two halves. The door that could only be entered by one person was suddenly expanded to a height of about three meters. Following the huge amounts of the hole, the Iron Overlord slowly walked out into the exhibition hall with heavy steps. Please give me flowers. Glancing forward, Obadiah's eyes flashed sharply, and the huge amounts of metal head looked straight in Pepper's direction, and then he controlled the armor and rushed forward without any hesitation. Goodbye, back to Bo. There are no obstacles around. Even though the Iron Overlord is not as fast as Tony's steel battle suit, as long as it is allowed to fully charge, it is still not a problem to catch up with an ordinary person. So even if Pepper is still running away at this moment, as long as he is given a few seconds, Obadiah will have the confidence to catch up with him. Looking at the Iron Overlord who was constantly approaching her home, a trace of despair gradually appeared in Pepper's eyes. Just when she thought her home was in danger, the next moment she, GNG, turned into a prostitute. There was a sudden fluctuation in the air in front of her, and then, Chin Luo's figure instantly appeared in front of Pepper. Just as the Iron Overlord behind him was about to catch up with her, Chin Luo decisively reached out and grabbed the opponent's arm. With a thought, in an instant take the other person and disappear in place. The next moment, Chin Luo, Pepper, and Phil Coulson, who had taken Pepper with him to escape, all appeared on the street corner dozens of meters away from the exhibition hall. Pepper, who was originally full of despair, suddenly had a blur in her eyes. Before she could react, she saw herself appearing here instantly, staring blankly at Chin Luo's back, about to say something. Before she could say anything, Phil Coulson suddenly looked happy and said quickly, Mr. Chin Luo? After seeing Chin Luo's arrival, Phil Coulson was relieved. He knew very well how powerful Chin Luo was. With Chin Luo here, no matter how strong the steel monster is, it can no longer pose any threat to them. Mr. Chin Luo, that one just now? Phil Coulson was about to ask Chin Luo for help. As if he knew what he was thinking, Chin Luo waved his hand casually and said with a relaxed expression, If you want me to help solve that trouble, forget it. As he spoke, Chin Luo slowly raised his head and looked at the sky. He is someone else's opponent, just leave it to him to solve everything. Counting the time, he should be here soon. Hearing this, a trace of doubt flashed subconsciously in Phil Coulson's eyes. Before he could ask any more questions, a bright and bright fire flashed across the night sky in an instant, and then stopped over the exhibition hall in front of him. The flames fell straight to the ground, accompanied by a dull crashing sound, and then, a steel armor wrapped in gold and red, with a streamlined shape that looked extremely eye-catching, suddenly appeared in front of everyone. 